Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, let's please come to order. And before I bring everybody to order, if uh, you wanted to make public comment tonight, I believe there's cards in the back of the room if you want to fill them out and get them to the city clerk. Mountain City Clerk, is there cards in the back of the room? Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the City of Madeira Beach Board of Commissioners regular meeting. Today is August 9th, and the time is 6.01 p.m. Commissioner Lister, will you please lead us in this evening's invocation? I will, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Please join me in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful city. We ask that you continue to bless and, and comfort it. We ask that the decisions made here tonight are with your guidance and with your wisdom. Always in your name we, we pray. Amen. Please remain standing and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Gahovey. Here. Commissioner Hodges. Here. Commissioner Lister. Here. Commissioner Poe. Here. Mayor Palladino. Here. At this time, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the provided minutes. I so move, Mr. Mayor. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any additions or corrections? Will the State Clerk please call the roll? Mayor Palladino. Yes. Commissioner Poe. Yes. Commissioner Lister. Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Vice Mayor Gahavi? Yes. All right. At this time, I will entertain a motion of approval of the agenda. I'll make the motion for the approval of the agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any comments from staff? Is there any further comments from the commission? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Paul? Here. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Vice Mayor Gahavi? Yes. Mayor Palladino. Yes. First presentations. Uh, we have a presentation for PSTA this evening with Mr. Brad Miller. Mr. Miller, how are you doing this evening? Great. Oh. Okay. Hi, my name is Mark Day, and I'm the for Reddington Beach, and I am the representative of the Big C for the uh, at the PSTA. So when something goes wrong, you can get in touch with me. Um, Brad is going to talk about the Central Avenue uh, BRT, which is uh, something that brings the uh, Central Avenue from uh, Pinellas or from, uh, yeah, from Pinellas straight over to here. It's a, it's a fast way of getting here. And uh, let me turn it over to him. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Mayor and uh, other members of the Madeira Beach Commission. Uh, again, I'm Brad Miller. I'm the CEO of PSDA, and it's an honor to be here. As Mark said, who is your board member on the PSDA board, uh, this was an idea actually by the mayor of uh, Oldsmar that, like uh, several cities, like Madeira Beach, who don't have a member of your council on the PSDA board, it would be good to give sort of an update periodically to those cities. So that's why I brought Mark along, so you could meet him, and then I've passed out a one-page handout that sort of gives a little update on sort of the hot topics and the things that are going on with your transit system uh, that you're a member of in Pinellas County. Um, we have a really strong, uh, great board, uh, which Mark is part of, and they are moving forward. There's a picture at the top of when we signed a labor agreement with our largest union. PSDA has about 600 employees that operate our 200 and some buses across the county and all the trolleys uh, across the county. And most of those are bus drivers and mechanics who are in a union. Um, our ridership, um, actually on the ridership along the beach has been very strong and continues to be strong because it's tied to tourists, to tourism. Our services on the mainland are actually down somewhat from all time record highs but really following along with um, national trends. 
We have a lot of plans for service improvements, in, uh, including services here to Madeira Beach, and I'll just talk quickly about the bus rapid transit in a second. At the bottom of the uh, page shows something that we're very proud that we were the first in the United States, first transit system in the United States to launch, which was a partnership with Uber, uh, Uber and taxi cabs. We had a pilot program in Pinellas Park, and this fall we've announced that we're going to expand to go countywide. And what that is is really this idea of a first or last mile connection to the bus system. So if you live too far away from Gulf Boulevard to catch the bus, or your destination is too far away from the bus uh, to get there, now, starting this fall, you will be able to take Uber or a taxi cab for about $1 to go about three or four miles, uh, up to three or four miles to a major stop like Tyrone Square Mall, and then we'll have a stop out here on the beach as well, where you'll be able to take Uber or a cab to then catch the, bu catch the bus or the trolley to your final destination. We think it'll be a very, a very big success. I also want to point out our transit shelter match program, and I am thankful for Commissioner Lister. I know you've talked to some of our staff, and we've, I think, got that worked out uh, for the um, shelters at Johns Pass, where our PSDA is paying for all of the, um, the shelter pads and the concrete work, and then you have a nice... Uh, Umbrella. Umbrella, there like a shelter going in there, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, Fantastic. The other, the other page is what uh, uh, Mark mentioned, is our Central Avenue Bus Rapid Transit Project. This is a very exciting project, and I'm happy to say this is actually going to happen. We now have all of the funding needed to bring this project to final design. We have a very strong commitment by the state of Florida and very strong um, support from the federal government for the construction. So in about two or three years, we will be implementing this route. If you look on the back of the page, there's a map that shows essentially that the route will definitely go from downtown St. Petersburg to a beach, which beach is still to be determined. But um, you can see the plan will either for have it to come here to Madeira Beach, go to Treasure Island, or go to St. Pete Beach. And so uh, I have spoken to both the Treasure Island City Councils and the St. Pete Beach City Councils like I am tonight, giving them the same update and saying that we're hopeful that we will make a decision. We're completing sort of the design and technical work now and that the PSDA board will make a decision later this, uh, later this fall. And then we'll keep on schedule with that and then, like I said, implement this probably in late 2018 or 2019 after we build stations. So what this, pro what this uh, route is intended to do is provide an express trip to either the beach for tourists from St. Petersburg or vice versa to, say, uh, a baseball game or to downtown St. Petersburg. If you want the local uh, route, like if you want to go to the shops along Central Avenue or up and down Gulf Boulevard on the beach, you might take our trolley because that has many stops. But if you want an express, if you're trying to get either there or here fast, you would take this express bus rapid transit. So where, where does Madeira Beach stack up? Well, the good thing is that Madeira Beach is already a member of PSDA. The PSDA um, uh, represented and your citizens are already paying for transit in your city. St. Pete Beach and Treasure Island uh, have never been members of PSTA. They, P they buy transit from us through a contract. So their councils uh, would have to, in order to uh, uh, support this bus rapid transit, would have to pay for it out of their general fund of their city. And they are uh, currently deciding whether they are interested in doing that. Or they could choose to join PSTA like Madeira Beach and 22 other cities in Pinellas County all did in 1984, where uh, the citizens voted, and so uh, an approximately 0.75 uh, property tax levy is levied across the rest of the county, except for those two cities, Kenneth City and Bel Air Shores. Um, so it remains to be seen. Again, the, the route to Madeira Beach has very strong qualities. One, it goes by, it's one of our highest ridership corridors because it goes by Tyrone Square Mall. It goes by the VA on the way to Madeira Beach. 
we know that there's planned for um, substantial development, but also potentially a uh, need for traffic mitigation along in here at Madeira Beach, and that's what this rapid transit line would provide. So love to hear your thoughts. I know uh, your city manager and uh, planners have been participating in a lot of, we've met with them and then they've come to some of our public workshops we've had on it. We'll have more of those. Um, and um, certainly I'd like to get your citizens to provide any input they want to at this time as we design this system. So with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions or thank you very much. Actually, Brad, it's real exciting uh, going to the private-public partnership. I know those are things we've discussed, you know, discussed on the Tourist Development Council, and you know the marketing that we do to bring people in to Pinellas County. It's, you know, the Chicago areas, the New York areas, where the average person doesn't even own a driver's license. So they are relying on public transportation, Uber, free beach taxis. So uh, taking these steps is, uh, you know, an outstanding thing in uh, your department and moving our county forward because the age that our visitors are younger. I think it's the average age is 40s, mid 40s, so using apps and things like that. So we're just losing that mystique of being God's waiting room. Our county's getting younger, so what y'all are doing is keeping up with the times. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next presentation, Golf Beaches Public Library, uh, Maggie Sanella. Maggie, how are you doing this evening? Well, thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Maggie Snell, the Gulf Beach Public Library Director here, next door neighbor. Um, I've come tonight to talk a little bit about the budget um, that library board had approved back in May, and just to give you all a little update on what's going on over at the library. Um, the Gulf Beaches Library consists of five municipalities that financially support it, um, Treasure Island, Madeira Beach, Reddington Beach, North Reddington Beach, and Reddington Shores. And each of the municipalities has two um, members that are appointed to the library board. Um, back in the end of May, the library board had approved a budget of $524,830 for the upcoming fiscal year. And I hope you all have had a chance um, to see it. If you haven't, I, I know, um, Amy, city clerk, can make sure that you all get copies of it, or you can always ask me. Uh, the budget has, is, it's just an increase of a little over 2%. So that's not bad. Um, it, it comes out to about $12,000 total increase. Um, our funding, it comes from local contributions, which include funding from the five municipalities. Uh, the Pinellas Public Library Cooperative, we get funding from um, residents of unincorporated county. Uh, some of the tax money comes into the library. Um, operations, donations, interest from CDs, and also we have a small amount of reserves left. Um, some of you who have been around a while might have remembered that about eight years ago, we had some reserves at the library that were uh, PPLC reserves. It was money that the library had been saving up um, for a potential expansion to the facility, uh, but it was discovered that that money couldn't have actually been used for an expansion. It could have only been used to um, enhance the library inside, not for bricks and mortar. So the board had, eight years ago, had decided at the time that they were gonna start spending that money down and um, had been applying some of that money towards the budget every year. So we're at our last about $3,500 of that money and um, we'll be spending that towards the budget this, this coming fiscal year. So what we have had to do for the upcoming year is to increase the local contributions slightly. Um, the total amount that the library board approved is $331,926. Um, so that represents about uh, a 14% increase over this current fiscal year. And like I said, the reason why we had to do such a, a, an increase is because of the reserve money um, being spent down. Um, Madeira Beach's local contribution, I am hoping that you all will approve it when budget time comes, uh, would come to $89,289 for the whole fiscal year. And that represents 
about 27% of the overall local contribution. And that uh, amount is based on population of, your, of the city. Um, and this is just an increase of, of about $11,500 from this year. Um, Madeira's per capita spending would come to $20.57. So in my eyes anyway, and in, I think a lot of people's eyes, $20.57 per resident for library use for a year, that's quite a bargain. Um, I don't really know anywhere where you can get books and movies and streaming, um, films, uh, come to programs for $20 a year. Um, as of August 8th, I ran some statistics on residents here at Madeira Beach um, who have library cards, who have an active library card. And an active library card is considered one that um, it has not expired for three years. Typically, we're going to see people come in within that time. And you all have a little over 3,000 residents here who have active library cards. Madeira Beach has always typically had the highest number of residents um, who support Gulf Beaches Library have cards because we're right in the, in the city. Very convenient for residents um, to just ride their bikes or walk. Um, so we do see a lot of the residents here. And we recently got a new um, computer program throughout Pinellas County, so we've, our statistics are um, a little lacking right now. So I apologize for some of our older statistics right now. I can only give you some numbers through the end of February, um, which would be the uh, first five months of our fiscal year. But Madeira Beach residents have checked out over 16,000 items for the first five months of the fiscal year from libraries throughout Pinellas County. Um, Madeira Beach residents typically use Gulf Beaches, but with their card, they can go to any library in the county. Um, some of them do, some of them utilize other libraries. It might be a little more convenient for them, uh, but your contribution to the library allows the residents to go anywhere within the county. And then we've also had, uh, for the first five months of the fiscal year, almost 1,900 unique scans of library cards, and that's people actually checking out physical materials. And don't forget, we've also got lots of virtual materials too. Um, Ebooks, uh, we've got um, electronic audiobooks, streaming films, um, we don't right now have the capabilities to count residents from a city on those. We can only count them by a library, um, but I am hoping at some point we can do that. And our adult and youth programming is very popular. Um, for the first seven months of the fiscal year, we've had over 180 programs um, for adults, and we've also had um, excuse me, we've had 180 programs for children and 80 programs for adults. And we've had over 3,200 people attend those programs. Um, and that includes everything from story times, movies, game nights, uh, book discussion groups. So our library is actively used. Um, one of the things that we're working on this summer, and we hope to have a draft in place, is um, an updated long range plan. And our current long range plan expires in September and um, we need to update that. So we have been working on it. Um, we, a committee has been formed that consisted of three board members, but now we're down to two because one of them has left the, the board. And also the president of our Friends of the Library is involved in it and myself. Um, we've done some surveys, uh, we've done some staff interviews, uh, we'll be doing more as we continue on with the long range plan. But we've developed nine goals that we want to um, work towards. And once the plan is approved, and I'm sure that your um, representatives on the library board will let the commission know what those plans are. Uh, two of the goals uh, that we're really gonna be working toward are to enhance the physical facility in some way. Um, I don't know exactly yet what that means, but we do have uh, a fair amount of money in reserves from some large donations that have been given to the library that has just been um, sitting, waiting to be spent. 
and um, we would like to do something for the community to enhance it in some way. The last major upgrade to the library was back in the 80s. Um, so it's time to, to do a little something. Um, also, one of the top goals is to have a more robust financial plan for current and anticipated library needs. I think um, the board really wants to work towards that. Um, so we are hoping that when budget talks, I know you're in the midst of them, but when the budget does get decided, um, that you all keep us in mind and um, know that your residents actively use the library and I know the community really loves it over there. Um, and if anybody has any questions of, about the budget or the library itself, I'd be happy to answer them. Actually, Maggie, one question. Do you work with any of our sta uh, state representatives, like uh, Representative Peters or Brandis or Ahern, trying to get more funding for, I know there's not a lot of state funding out there, I know the dollars have to dwindle through the years, mm -hmm. but are you doing actively campaigning or lobbying for those dollars? We are doing that through the Pinellas Public Library Cooperative. Okay. Um, it all filters in through that. We work as one unit. Um, because our state funding actually has to be given to the cooperative and then distributed that way. So yes, we actively do that. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any questions for? No questions. I just want to say great job, Mickey. It, it, it is nice. And, and I know you've been here to probably, are you, this is your eighth year? Going on. Yeah, eight years. eight years. And uh, in that time, the library has just run uh, leaps and bounds. Appreciate really has. Everybody that uh, goes in there says, uh, you know, this is the library to use. So thank you again. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I may, uh, Maggie had mentioned that 3,000 residents of Madeira Beach enjoyed a library. Um, do you have any statistics on some of the other cities that uh, are part of your library? How many? I do. And actually, this um, presentation that I'm giving you all tonight is one that I give to all of the communities that serve the library. Um, Offhand, I d in my notes, I don't have those numbers okay. with me, right. but I can send them to you. But yes, I do all the statistics the same way uh, for each of the cities. Okay. And uh, do you reach out to the other cities also for the, for uh, funds? Oh yes, oh yes. Everybody, the the five cities that fund the library, um, they they all kind of get the same treatment, so to speak. Okay. So yes, I do. I go out to them. I talk to them. Um, we're all you're all equals when it comes to funding the library based on population. Keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Okay. Based on population. Thank you. And I will get those statistics right. to you. Okay. And Maggie, you are doing a fantastic job, and thank you for working with the city. I know when we have events, y'all are working and helping with parking over there. So thank you very much. It's just a. It's working out fine now. You know, there's some hurdles that you have to overcome. Yeah. And, you get over those and move on, so that's good. All right, thank, thank you. you. Much. All right, next, moving to public comment. This section is reserved for public comments on matters or concern pertaining to city business and which are not on the agenda. Public comment is limited to three minutes. Madam City Clerk. Ms. Hahn. Good evening, Mayor and commissioners and city managers and all that are here. Firstly, let me say thank you for the kind words earlier at the workshop. I truly appreciate it. I enjoy working with all of you and, and uh, it was nice to hear that you enjoy working with me as well. Tonight I'm here just to let the residents and uh, everybody in the city know that we are doing our fourth annual Monte Carlo night. Everybody has liked it so well that we've brought it back. It is the 27th of this month from 7 to 10. I have invites for all of you, and I did leave some in the back on the desk, and that is at the Treasure Island Community Center. But not to fear, October 1st, we're doing a car show here on Rock Park. And I just want to make sure that everyone knows that whether they're a business or a resident, you are all invited. Thank you. Just got to watch Commissioner Hodges at this. She's a pretty big roller at casino night. <laughs> Madam City Clerk. Tom Wally. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, 
First of all, I'd like to say uh, the prayer that you have at the uh, beginning of this meeting is awesome and, you know, shows our appreciation to God. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, Pat Schantz and her husband, is they are patriarchs of this community in church where they're members. And for as long as I can remember, I've watched them praising and worshiping God in the church choir and overseeing the city as mayor. Pat has devoted her blood, sweat, and tears to making this city what it is today and accusing her of bad ethics or not being politically correct, we should all be ashamed of ourselves. God has given us all certain gifts and abilities, commands us in the Bible to honor and follow the people that, is, that he has put in authority. Travis, Shane, Terry Lister, and everyone that uh, sits on these boards and volunteers, most of the citizens in this city stand proud of you. As we can see, even in this building, the accomplishments of the visual signs that wouldn't be here today without your vision and guidance. I stand proud behind you for your future visions and accomplishments. I guarantee that most citizens that live in this city don't realize how little our elected officials get paid. And I, for one, am embarrassed to know the amount of time that you all put in and how little you are compensated for your time. An expensive lawyer gets $200, an inexpensive lawyer gets about $200 an hour. And I think that our elected officials should get at least $100 an hour for the time that they put in running, thinking about, and sitting on boards for our city and should get bonuses for huge accomplishments. Oh, the other things I can't talk about right now. Lastly, every resident that owns a property in this city is responsible for paying taxes. And just because you pay taxes in the city doesn't mean that you should be able to stand in the way of good people running or volunteering their time to make our city a better place. Instead, support and pray for our leaders that God has put in place and become a part of the process, not a deterrent. Thank you. Thank you. Madam C. Clerk. Marilyn Halfling. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, happy to be here. And um, first of all, I'll give a kudos out to the rec department for um, doing the Citizen Appreciation Month this month. I know the rain is getting in the way of some of the stuff, but I'm looking forward to that Bon Jovi tribute concert, for sure, and yoga and Zumba and a few other things. Um, on to my more serious comments. Um, I'm a little concerned about the communication in the city. Um, one thing I would really like to have the meetings and the fact that there are openings for, uh, on the commissions on our big fancy electronic board out front. Um, I think that would really be helpful. Um, legal notices in the paper are expensive and I don't think it, anybody reads them. Most people don't even pick up their um, Tampa Bay or whatever the beach beacon lays around in, in many places. So I can't imagine they're reading legal notices in the paper. Um, and the city website, a lot of people don't bother to go. I used to automatically get the city website um, notices of meetings. I don't get those. That's been quite a while. So I have to make a point of going and doing that. But I really think communication needs to be upped in the city so people know what's happening. Um, and I, I was pleased to see the process tonight for the appointments. I was able to read the people who had applied for different openings. Um, and um, I would like to see some vetting of people before they're appointed. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense um, to um, have some screening for conflict of um, conflict of interest. Um, pe being on these boards is a responsibility and um, it is not moronic to vet ahead of time. It's smart to vet or to check people's backgrounds on, on really basics, conflict of interest or any kind of legal things that are unresolved that are going on. Um, on to the next point, I just am wondering if we have any budget review time set up yet. 
Um, I'd like to have information on that as soon as possible. Um, uh, I'd also like to be seeing a citizens meeting where building permit requirements are gone over. I feel there's many people that some, some have to do permits, some don't. And it's really iffy all over town and people feel really like somebody's pointing them out when they get, um, you know. Uh, and so I think it would be helpful just for, again, communications. Um, let me see. Um, the only other thing I'd like to say is I'd really like the city manager and the mayor in particular to slow down on their comments and to speak directly. And I, I'm beginning to question my hearing because I really can't hear very well in this room, but it's primarily those two people. Um, I, I could hear um, Ms. Horton, Orton today very well, and normally if you have a hearing problem, you have more trouble hearing women than, um, than men. So I'm, I'm just asking people to really work on communication. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. And Marilyn, the uh, budget workshop, and I thought it was well publicized, is August 16th. Next, uh, what's that, next Tuesday at 7 p.m.? The budget workshop is next uh, week, a week from today. Yeah. Uh, the advertisements for the uh, commissions were on the sign, and it is not the city manager's job to vet the qualifications for commissioners that want to, or uh, candidates that want to be uh, uh, considered for the plan commission or for the civil service commission. Well, I, I would like us Fairly. to have someone to vet. Debate. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Clark. Terry England. Good evening. Um, I live up the beach a little ways in Indian Rocks, but I went to these two schools on the other side of the bridge and grew up in these area. And uh, there has been recently some questions about your judgment on fulfilling a position for a shirt to complete a short term for about six months for one of your commissioners that uh, uh, decided they couldn't continue on. Um, and I wanted to just reassure you that having served with this gentleman on the Southwest Florida Water Management District, Pinellas Anclote Basin for many years, uh, we would have, to be in that position, you would have to be appointed uh, by the governor, approved by the Senate, and recommended by the House of Representatives. So, uh, he has been uh, vetted uh, by other levels of government. Uh, I know he's served on uh, the uh, Pinellas Planning Council, and uh, he's the only elected, the only uh, president that we've had twice in the 100-year history of the Pinellas Park Chamber. So uh, he's done a good job. Um, I know he's been involved in the uh, Holocaust Museum for years and the family resources. So he has a serving heart. I think he'll do a great job for you. And I think you made a brilliant decision to have him fulfill this very short six month term and give him a taste of politics. Because I cautioned him that no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. I have no more for public comment. Okay. Closing public comment, moving on. Next up, the consent agenda. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion for the consent agenda. I shall move, Mr. Mayor. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Before we move forward, Mr. City Attorney, would you please lay out the uh, what the consent agenda details? All right, so, so the motion would include the appointment of the following individuals to the Planning Commission, Sonny Flynn, Michael Noble and Robin Belosky. Sorry if I butchered your name. And the appointment of the following members to the Civil Service Board, and that's Jim Everett and Tammy Slater Kendrick. And if this motion passes, I would like to take a couple of minutes to have them come forward, and I'll go ahead and swear them in. And uh, since I have the three applicants, uh, Ms. Flynn, would you like to say any words? Introduce yourself. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioners. 
Um, this is a great opportunity for me. My name is Sunny Flynn. I'm the president of Johns Pass Village Association. I'm on the executive board of the Madeira Beach Treasure Island Chamber. Um, and it's a great honor, not only that, to be a resident, but also to serve the residents of Madeira Beach. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Robin, would you like to say, introduce yourself? And you had a good time on vacation. <laughs> is is the husband agreeing with you on that one? I don't know if he's not smiling at that, okay. My name is Robin Belosky, and I look forward to my service on Planning Commission, and I would like to thank all of my city commissioners for entrusting me to this important position, and I look forward to working with a very professional and diligent staff on good land use issues that we have facing us. I have been active in other government affairs, and I hope to bring that energy and enthusiasm with me as I serve on Planning Commission. And I look forward to getting to know all of my friends in Madeira Beach much better. I've only lived here a year, but this is a good way to start. Thank you. Thank you. And is Mr. Nobles here? No, Mr. Mr. Mayor, uh, if it can be noted that Mr. Noble uh, was, is out of town uh, on a, a work assignment, and so he will be sworn in at the next planning commission meeting in September. All right. Um, is there any further comments from the commission? Mr. Yes, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Uh, I wanted to state that we had such a wonderful variety of, uh, of, um, of, of folks applying for, for this position, for the planning position. Uh, everybody really had a lot of good qualifications and, and because they did not get the position, it doesn't mean that they were not qualified for this, for this position. I just wanted to thank them for their participation and, and letting them know that uh, they're I would say just as qualified as some of the ones that were picked. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Any yeah. other commissioner? Mr. Mayor, uh, you can go ahead and uh, introduce the civil service electees as well, and they'll be sworn in at the same time. Okay. Is the uh, Mr. Everett? Commissioners, thank you. As much as I enjoy my service on the Planning Commission, um, I felt it was time to, uh, to step off after two terms and let some other citizens step in and give their input, but still wanted to contribute, um, so that's why I applied for the civil service opportunity. So I, I thank you guys for your confidence um, and your support, and I look forward to, to serving the City of Madeira Beach, or continuing my service as City of Madeira Beach. So thank you. I appreciate it. Terry, are you here? Is she here? Is Terry here? No. Tammy? Tammy, I'm sorry. Tammy. I'm sorry. That's okay. I can't even read my own clean writing. It's horrible. My name is Tammy Slater Kendrick, and I've lived here for about two years. I come from the corporate world. I hope nobody will hold that against me, but um, love Madeira Beach and wanted to find a way to give back to the city a little bit because we enjoy it so much. So I decided I would see what I could do to help. Use me as you will. Thank you very much. Is there any further comment? Yes. Oh, I wanted to make a remark about Tammy. <laughs> it was about three years ago, I was working out in my front yard, and her husband pulled up in front of my house, and he gets out of the car, and he comes up to me, and he goes, what can you tell me about the neighborhood? You know, I'm looking at him thinking, okay, this is a joke. <laughs> you know? Here I am, a commissioner, and he's over there asking me stuff about my neighborhood. And so I started to tell him about it and the city and everything. And he said he was so excited because they just bought the house down the road from me, and they were so excited about moving here. And he said he couldn't wait to see what we did next. He was so impressed. And he, remember, still he still is. <laughs> but it was really nice meeting him. But it was just a a very odd meeting of a neighbor asking me that, but uh, it was nice. It was nice to meet him. Thank you, Commissioner Hodges. Is there any further comment? Would the city clerk please call the roll? Vice, Vice Mayor Gohavi? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. And then, Mr. Oh. Mayor, just so we can make a note yeah. for those that are in attendance at this meeting that were not at the workshop meeting, we did not get an applicant for the library board, so we're going to re-advertise and revisit this issue in 30 days. So if anybody out there in TV viewing land or somebody that's attending the 6 o'clock meeting is interested in, 
is qualified, please uh, put in your application for the library board. Thank you. And would the applicants at this time please come forward to be sworn in? I'm going to go ahead. If you could raise your right hand, I'm going to swear you under oath. And I want you to repeat the words after me. I, and then state your name. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Florida, the Charter and the Code of Ordinances of the City of Madeira Beach, and I will faithfully discharge my duties as a member of whatever the Planning Commission or the Civil Service Board okay, up for the City of Madeira Beach to the best of my ability in the matter provided by law. Congratulations. I need each one of you to sign these forms. I'm going to hand them to you and you can fill them out at your leisure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your service to your city. Next, moving on, contracts and agreements. The First Amendment <clears throat> to service agreement with Hubbard's Sea Adventures Incorporated. Before I entertain a motion, Mr. City Manager, you want to give us a little yes, update? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is just a, a simple amendment, one of which is um, just uh, um, amending the start date uh, for the taxi service. Um, any other further questions uh, either I or the city attorney can uh, uh, comment on, but uh, staff recommendations for approval. At this time, I'll we'll entertain a motion. I just want to jump in here. No. There's one other thing that we did in this amendment um, besides changing the term. We also added a paragraph that would allow for some flexibility in the listing of the landing points. Um, so um, that exhibit A is going to be modified relative to the scope of services gives us a little bit of flexibility. It's not so stringent. And Mr. Mayor and Commission members, the reason for that is some of these uh, landing points or loading points or bus stops or whatever you want to call them are still being negotiated. And so if we can have some flexibility that staff can approve those um, uh, throughout the contract as Mr. Hubbard and, and his company negotiate those, that's all we're, we're looking for on that. All right. So again, staff recommendations for approval. All right. So at this time, we'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any comments from the commission? Is there any further comments? Uh, Mr. Mayor, yes. staff, will, staff will return to you when, you know, we, we, okay. get, when we add a, sta or a stop or something like that. But uh, this, will, this will, just like that uh, fees manual, you know, this will be a fluid thing until we kind of get it up and running and, and get a couple of these stops negotiated. So right now I think we're at three or four and we're, you know, we were shooting for eight to ten. So. And I know, and Mr. Same Manager, I know this isn't a big deal, but I've seen it down at India Rocks Beach where we use the uh, public docks down there. They've yeah. actually got like maps or something showing the different businesses and at the landings and things like that. Are we going to be able to move forward and do something? That's not on that? we, the city. That's, that's on, going to be on, on him, the, okay. the, the okay. operator. But uh, that certainly will be the case. Okay, thank you. Is there any further comment? I'm, I'm not sure if Mr. Reese Noren has this or not. I can't quite tell if it says H or not. The city clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Vice Mayor Gahabi? Yes. All right, next and finished business, Ordinance 2016-06. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Ordinance 2016-06, an ordinance of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, creating Section 86-29 of the Code of Ordinances to provide for administrative waivers. 
providing for purpose, applicability, authority, application process, review, findings and decision, conditions of approval and appeal procedures, and providing for an effective date. That was the second and final reading of Ordinance 2016-06 by title only. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any comments from staff, Mr. City Manager? Uh, no, at this time, obviously, staff recommendation is for approval. If there is some commentary, this is not a, you know, a, a power issue or a, an authoritative issue that the city manager wants. In fact, this is a, a common amongst other cities, and what this does is, uh, for lack of a better term, cut down on the more or less slam dunk type variances that would go before the magistrate, and the magistrate is an expensive process, but it's a necessary process. And so I believe, and Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm wrong but this is um, a, a waiver uh, within the um, uh, circumstances of five feet or 15%, whichever is more restrictive, if I'm correct. Correct. So this isn't giving total authority to the city manager to grant variances on you know, any, any type of thing whatsoever. This is just those smaller issues that can probably be handled at an administrative level instead of making a, 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 a major case of it, so to speak. Mr. City Manager, is there any comments from the Commission? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, if I may, uh, we discussed this last time. Sometimes the uh, rear setback is on top of a seawall, and seawalls generally have this thing called dead man, which is basically a big cable with a big piece of concrete that holds the seawall back, and typically they're like 18 feet. So if you are reducing the rear setback that encom that, that, that um, the conflicts with a seawall, uh, we probably would want to make sure that the seawall is uh, reviewed by a structural engineer and if, uh, you know, if they need to redesign the dead men to accommodate the setback, just wanted to make sure that that is basically a part uh, uh, of your Yeah, opinion. I think obviously all that would be considered. If you look at the background on, uh, on tab I, the granting of the waiver will only be permitted if the applicant has determined there are special circumstances and specific findings that have been made. Waivers will not be granted for permitted land uses, density, floor area ratios, spe uh, specific prohibitions, and procedural requirements. The waiver would not grant special privileges inconsistent with the limitations on other properties in the vicinity, so on and so forth. So this is not uh, just a, 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 a blank check, so to speak. There has to be a very special circumstance, otherwise it, it goes past me and goes on to the magistrate. Thank you. Is there any further comment? I have one, okay. Jim Everett. You put my planning commission hat on one more time. Um, this was passed by the planning commission at our last meeting, and as Shane Marty mentioned, the purpose is to make is to streamline the process um, and not force somebody to go to a special magistrate for a very small variance. As it's mentioned, he can only go five feet or fifteen percent, whichever is the least. The two. Um, the magistrate process is expensive for the city. It costs money and time. It costs staff time to prepare for that. So we were trying to make the process a little bit more streamlined. However, if you don't like the ruling that the city manager makes, you can still go the special magistrate process. So you're not losing anything um, in the process um, that's currently in place. So you still have the ability to take your issue to special magistrate if you're not pleased with the city manager's ruling. So it's just an attempt to streamline the process on very small variances that, as Shane mentioned, are typically a slam dunk issue before the special magistrate. So just trying to clean that docket up a little bit and make the process a little bit more streamlined, which is good for the citizens. They don't have to wait for the next special magistrate meeting to occur to have a very small variance approved. So that's that's the purpose of, uh, of this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Mr. Mayor, I was just handed this information and I knew it, uh, or at least some of it off the top of my head. Just just so you're aware, you know, and the, and the magistrate, again, is, is a very specific process and, and it's, it's needed in a number of different circumstances, but these we could maybe um, handle administratively. Um, it's $215 per hour, and that's just for the magistrate, not to mention the amount of staff time that goes into it. And just in our last billing cycle, we had a bill for $3,182, of which some of these would have qualified. So um, I, I don't want to say that we're, we're doing this just for a budgetary reason, but there's, there's also reasons that from a, a, a development standpoint or when people want to do something that they don't want to wait 
you know, for the next magistrate to move on, that this is, uh, when it's de minimis in nature, that we can handle it administratively. So, um, again, not a responsibility that I'm necessarily advocating for, but if you want to handle it like that and, and save a couple of bucks and probably make it a little more streamlined, this is definitely the way to go. And again, we're not reinventing the wheel. Other, uh, other municipalities have similar uh, ordinances. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. I also have another comment from Tom Wally. Okay. Thanks again. Um, as far as the city manager being in charge of variances, I think it's a great idea. And I think that we used to have a board of adjusters that used to do all of our variances and hearings of stuff like that. And the um, board of adjusters approved almost everything that came through from the citizens. And it was awesome for the, cities that, that, for the citizens that lived in this city. Now we've got a special magistrate, and the numbers have turned completely around. He denies just about everything. And the amount of red tape that is created is ridiculous. I think not only should Shane have uh, control over the variance, but zoning changes and all other requests that are usually denied by the, well, then what about the Planning Commission? The Planning Commission is just kind of, I sat on the Planning Commission for four years. The Planning Commission is just an advisory, an advisory board for you guys. Why don't we give the Planning Commission some authority to make changes like this and get rid of our special magistrate? And that, because they're the people that review this stuff before it goes before a special magistrate anyway. And, and get rid of the special magistrate that denies 99% of the stuff that goes in front of them by the citizens of this city. And put the, um, authority into the volunteers, the people that really care about this city. Everybody that sits on the command, planning commission is a volunteer and they don't get paid. Let's give them some authority to make the decisions for this city because they're the ones that are sitting on this board not getting paid, doing it because they love this city. Give them the authority to do it. Take the pressure off of Shane, but get it away from the special magistrate that denies almost everything that goes in front of them. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. The city clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Vice Mayor Gahavi? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Paul? Yes. All right, next new business, uh, Award of Banking Services RFP number 2016-02, authorization to award comprehensive banking services to Hancock Bank in accordance with RFP number 2016-02. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to award Banking Services RFP 2016-02. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. And Mr. City Manager, I imagine this is going to be the finance or director's. I, I, I defer to the okay. finance director. He did uh, put this out for bid to find a better rate, and he was successful. And with that, Vince, I'll let you announce the good news. And Yeah, thanks. Uh, I've been keeping the city commission aware of the progress of this over the last couple of months. Uh, there were several reasons why I felt it was appropriate to evaluate our current banking arrangement with Bank of America. First being that we have done business with them basically forever. I, I can't find any record of an agreement or a contract. They don't have a, a copy of any contract. The city clerk's office doesn't have one. So uh, it's been a long time since this has been evaluated. I can tell you that the current fee structure with Bank of America requires us to maintain a balance of approximately $2.8 million to offset their fees. In fact, I came to the City Commission about a year and a half ago, and that number, I was able to ne negotiate down to that $2.8 million dollar number. It had been significantly higher in the past. Um, of course, if we, if we happen to have more than $2.8 million in an account at any given time, uh, we don't earn interest on that surplus balance. It's also common that in these uh, banking relationships, there will be some type of overnight investment account or sweep account or money market account, which of course we do have with the current bank, and it offers uh, a grand total of five basis points, which is 0.05% interest, uh, which is uh, so far below market rates that I have since closed that account. Uh, we also have some relationship management issues to consider. I know one of the reasons that the city never looked at this in the past was that uh, it's maybe a bit of a community type issue. You know, the interest in maintaining a, a relationship with the bank in your town is, is probably appealing. Uh, but I, I have no relationship with anyone locally with Bank of America. The, the 
team members that I work with could be anywhere from North Dakota to North Carolina, and, and that changes quite a bit. So uh, between myself and my staff, sometimes we don't know who to go to for any kind of assistance. I can also tell you that there are some organizations, specifically city governments, that have recently been uh, essentially kicked out of business with Bank of America. They have uh, terminated their service agreements with some of the smaller organizations. So we definitely want to get out ahead of that potentially happening. If that was uh, if that was to happen, it would condense the time available to us to consider alternatives. So uh, we definitely wanted to get out ahead of that potential scenario. And finally, just keeping up with best practices, one thing I've been trying to do over the last couple of years is bring new policies and ideas to your attention for consideration that are in tune with, uh, with GFOA best practices. And this is definitely within uh, that, same, that same perspective. So just to, to review the process with you a little bit, we advertised an RFP back on June 10th. I sent that document out to contacts at 17 different banks. The, the intent of that RFP was to modernize some of our services. For instance, I'm sure all of you, at, you know, in your own home, on your own cell phones, have probably taken advantage of the new apps on your cell phones where you can take a, a picture of a check and automatically it'll be credited to your account. I can do that from home, but I can't do that here at the office place. So there's just a need to bring some of our services up to speed. Um, and of course, I wanted to secure a more favorable, favorable fee structure and improve that relationship support uh, for myself and my staff. So that RFP was, was evaluated based on weighted criteria, past experience with similar organizations being one, the scope of services offered by the bank being another. That means anything from fraud protection to actual transaction services uh, to individual accounts being offered. In uh, business systems, we evaluated the extent to which any proposals that the bank was, uh, was providing could serve to enhance what my staff and I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And finally, the fees served as the most important point of evaluation in the RFP. So to get there and to, and to evaluate all of that, I first held a, a pre-proposal meeting at the end of June and basically called in all the banks that might want to propose on it and kind of walked them through my intent, walked them through the RFP, and made sure that, uh, that we were going to get what I had in mind. And we received nine proposals, which the city should be proud of that. Uh, we've been in the market now quite a bit over the past four and a half years with different private placements and debt and uh, just really trying to uh, get out with some of these new, new services and uh, new concepts that we're doing. You know, the banks are starting to know who we are, and that's, that's a good thing for the city. So based on those evaluation criteria, uh, myself and my staff, we narrowed it down to Three finalists, uh, those banks were Hancock Bank, Bank United, and TD. Those were the three finalists based on the weighted criteria, and the uh, scoring sheet is in your packets. So there was a formal process involved in all that. At that point, once we had it narrowed down to three, three firms, we brought those three in for interviews. Essentially, the purpose of that was to further vet each of the banks and make sure that I was understanding their proposals correctly because these are 160 page proposals that get pretty technical and although we we would have evaluated them and ranked them on certain items I needed to be sure that I was interpreting their proposal correctly and when we got through that whole process uh, the final bank left standing was Hancock Bank and I will be recommending them to you tonight um, something to consider that uh, is of course of value to the city beyond just the value provided to my department is that there's a very real budget impact in, in moving to a new banking institution. The compensating balance required by Hancock Bank is $1.1 million compared to the $2.8 million of Bank of America. They offer, uh, quite frankly, they offer the most robust scope of services compared to all the other banks. Uh, new services that the city hasn't had in place prior to uh, conducting this RFP and that will certainly save myself and, and my staff quite a bit of time. <clears throat> More importantly, the, uh, the implementation team and support team that they offered, we felt very comfortable moving forward with them. In fact, they're here tonight. Tracy Ford and her colleague are here from the bank. Um, the net effect of all of this means that essentially once we complete this agreement, 
uh, almost overnight, $1.7 million becomes available for investment without any work on anyone's part, uh, aside from my staff and I. We will also be eliminating our current expense for vault service, and the net effect of that is an annual budget savings of $15,500 to the city. And so with all that said, I am recommending award of the RFP to Hancock Bank. Uh, I do need to mention that that is contingent on approval of the contract. We are still going through that process. Tom and their attorneys have been back and forth a couple of times now, and I'm, I'm confident we'll get there, but at this point, uh, it would be contingent on that approval. Thank you, Mr. Finance Director. Zane, Commissioners, how many questions for the Finance Director? Just quickly, the length of that contract, Vince, is... So we would be awarding a three-year contract with one option to renew for three more years. Thank you very much. And, and before I lose my mic, uh, wow, really? $15,000 savings just on this? You know, this is not the first time you've come to us and said you're doing something that is costing you money, and this is a better way to do it, and this is going to save us not $100, but $10,000 and $15,000 and $25,000. Basically, you're working for free, events. You, 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 you pay for yourself. <laughs> Good, good job, young man. Thank you. No bonus. No, no bonus. <laughs> Is there any further comment? Would the state clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Absolutely. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Vice Mayor Gohabi? Yes. All right. Next public hearing for alcoholic beverage application number 2016-06. Mr. City Attorney. Actually, we're going to have the planning director do this like okay. we did the last couple of times. So I'm going to hand it over to Oh, Chef. that's right. Thank you. Okay. Hello, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, this is a application to consider alcoholic beverage application 2016-06 for a two COP license at a commercial recreation and entertainment facility located at 15395 Gulf Boulevard, uh, it, which is Smuggler's Cove Adventure Golf. Um, they are located in a C3 retail commercial zoning district. We, uh, we had a public notice and it was sent to the property owners within a 300 feet radius 15 days prior to the meeting. Uh, the items of consideration are, the first one is the extent to which the location, extent to which the proposed alcoholic beverage request will adversely affect the character the existing Smuggler's Cove site has been a permanent fixture in Madeira Beach since 1988. The location is on the east side of Gulf Boulevard, located in C3 Retail Commercial Zoning District. The C3 Zoning District provides for a full range of urban services, ranging from retail bars, restaurants, professional services, banks, transient housing, and multifamily. Therefore, adding alcohol to the existing Smuggler's Cove will not have an adverse effect on the neighborhood. The next item is dealing with traffic. The proposed use will not generate congestion or a safety hazard. Smuggler's Cove sits on a corner lot with parking in the rear. The ingress and egress for parking is located on 154th Avenue and 1st Street East. The, the site meets all the parking requirements and adding beer and wine to the existing site will not create a, a safety hazard. The next item is being compatible. Smuggler's Cove is located on the east side of Gulf Boulevard, known for its multiple uses. The surrounding uses, as I mentioned earlier, are retail office, personal services, and multifamily residential. One block away from this site are a few bars that serve beer, wine, and liquor. Across the street at the Madeira Beach Snack Shack, beer and wine are also sold. The proposed permit for a two COP is compatible for the location. Um, whether or not this will adversely affect the public safety, Smuggler's Cove is an outdoor miniature golf facility. Those entering the park are paying guests. The applicant will take precautions for those purchasing alcohol within the establishment. Granting the permit will not adversely affect the public safety. And there are no outstanding fines or penalties against the city. Staff recommends approval for the alcohol beverage permit number 2016-06 to allow a two COP alcohol beverage license for the sale of beer and wine at Smuggler's Cove Adventure Golf, located at 15395 Gulf Boulevard for the reasons contained in this report. At this time, we'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to approve. 
a second. I have a motion and a second. Is the applicant here? How are you? I'm George Chavone. Uh, um, I am a general manager of Smuggler's Cove and have been so for 26 years. Um, this location has been here since 1988, and I was first here in uh, Madeira Beach in July of 1990 um, and have been involved in the management of this business uh, the entire time uh, since July 1990. Um, it's been a pleasure doing business in Madeira Beach all these years. We have a successful business, and uh, what this really is is, is is a request from our customers. Uh, we have it um, basically every day where they're, uh, uh, they're asking uh, for um, beer and wine when they mini-golf, and um, they, uh, they almost expect it, and I think the reason is is because uh, even movie theaters now sell, sell beer and wine, and uh, uh, almost every tourist attraction does... Uh, um, and uh, even the Madeira Beach Snack Shack does. And uh, so it's, uh, it's something that we are requesting uh, um, that you grant. And um, just to tell you a little bit about how we're going to do it, uh, it is intended for our existing customers only. We're not uh, going to be a bar. Uh, we're not uh, intending on, on serving anybody who's not there to golf. Um, we, um, <clears throat> also, we have two limited access points. People come in our golf course and, and they pay for golf. And, uh, and it's uh, in a small area. It's very easy to ID people and uh, see what's going on. And then also at the end of the golf round when people turn in their putters, uh, again, it's the same format. There's a very small area that uh, people uh, can, it's very easy for our customers to, um, to be ID'd. And, um, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to have only one beer per ID. Um, it's going to be a little bit inconvenient for some of our customers if, uh, if mom and dad are down uh, golfing on hole three um, and dad goes up to get mom and dad a beer, he's only going to be able to get one with his, uh, his ID. Um, that's very typical for this type of uh, usage. And um, so we're going to do that. We're going to <clears throat> simply uh, sell cans and small uh, containers of wine, um, no, no big, obviously no big bottles. And all of it will be, of course, consumed on premises, not, um, except for the parking lot. Uh, we, are that we, we are confident that we can uh, implement this uh, successfully and correctly. We have a successful business that we don't plan on harming with, the, with this uh, addition. Um, and uh, I want to thank you for your time and, uh, and consideration of this matter. Thank you. And I know you've been doing a lot of improvements over there. It's a great course, but it hasn't helped my short game at all. Hey, you got to come more often. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any uh, questions from the commission? Yes, one question, George. Do you have, do you, do you have more than this one course? We have five uh, courses. We have one in Indian Shores, and then uh, two in the Sarasota Bradenton area, and one down in Fort Myers Beach. Do, do any of your other locations serve alcohol? This is our first one. Okay. There's many other mini golf courses around the uh, of the state of Florida that do, but we are we've been a little slow to the game. Um, we just taking our time with this one. But you are, are, are going to allow it on the course? It's yes. Not just in this, yes. Uh, th this area? Yes, in the area so. that, right, right, exactly. And, and that's why we're going to control be one beer, one alcoholic beverage per ID per person. At, per are you going to hold their ID while they're playing golf? No, I, I don't think we can do that. Okay. Yeah. So, so if they want to come up for another one, they would have to come up and, and show their ID again and, and purchase. And, you know, every single time they would have to show an ID to purchase sure. an alcohol beverage. Okay. Is there a, a stop time? I, I don't know what time you close. What time do you close? Oh, we open at 9 a.m. seven days a week and close at 11 p.m. Is there, is there a start and stop time for, for serving? Or um, well, we, ha we haven't gone there yet, but... Uh, we haven't we haven't gone there yet. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah. Nine a.m. is a little early for a, a beer. Yes. <laughs> I, I noted you, you you still have alligators. We sure do. And and you're going to serve the beer in plastic cups or. or it, and beer can no it would be in beer cans and and uh, and wine and can you know like there's there's small wine containers that are either glass or or there's actually kind of almost like a carton like a mini milk carton type. A product they have now that uh, we would do uh, small containers that were like that that were that we use. We already sell, you know, at this point, of course, sodas and waters and ices and ice creams and all that kind of stuff, all in 
I usually enough. get that after the round. I usually get <laughs> they do. The, either way, they can um, a lot. You know, they can purchase on the when they walk in the door. Many times they purchase um, drinks, and they can fin purchase when they finish as well. Sure. Yeah. Yep. And again, I appreciate you doing that for other citizens of Madeira. Having uh, is it Mondays or Tuesdays? That's for, for residents. Um, I have my Mondays. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. So yeah. I appreciate you doing that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Mayor, sure. um, I did fail to mention, we did receive two letters of objection and one of no objection. Is there any further comment? Madam Commissioner Poe, you want to speak before? No. Oh. Okay. Yes. Let's see if clerk please call the roll. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Vice Mayor Gohavi? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Yes. And Commissioner Poe? Uh, Mr. City Attorney, I know this is kind of out of the ordinary, but unfortunately, I need to leave. I have a dog that unfortunately I'm tied to him like every four hours. Uh, there's one other thing, too, that I need to bring up tonight. I'm going to be absent for a couple of months. My husband and I got some pretty devastating news yesterday. So we will be dealing with that for a few months to see how it goes. So I appreciate the, you're letting me miss a few months without any penalties. Mr. City Attorney, let me ask you, I know the, uh, under the city charter is mm -hmm. if you miss four, is it four consecutive meetings that the board, but then that would be the commission making the decision to go ahead, it would, it's not automatic. It's four regular commission meetings, so it doesn't include workshops, it okay. doesn't include special meetings. The way that it reads is regular meetings, okay. and so um, you can excuse the commissioner for up to four before that she would um, be put in that position, unexcused, um, where she'd be put in that position where she would forfeit her office. So there's a couple of ways to do this. Usually what happens is, is that um, after the meeting that has occurred, the next meeting you would excuse the commissioner for the missing of the prior meeting because that way you, you know the reasons why that she's missed or he's missed that particular meeting. So you can do that every other meeting. Um, there's nothing in your charter or your code that says that you can't do it all at once. Um, but I think that um, Commissioner Poe is asking for some type of excused absence. And um, is it okay if I do this, Mr. City Attorney, and hope it pleases the Commission? I know we're out of order here, but uh, Madam City Clerk, would you please put that on the uh, agenda for discussing the workshop, and we'll go ahead and take care of that business then. And Mr. City Attorney, you can uh, give the Commission kind of an idea where we could head, and we could vote on it in the final, the next meeting. But we do know she has four months, I mean, because there's, there's a regular Commission meeting. Four regular meetings. Which is once a month. The problem is, is that you may hold another regular meeting, and I want to just make sure okay. that it's not four months, it's four meetings, but we can do it at the workshop. That way that we can nail down the dates that we know when the regular commission meetings are, and then you could excuse the commissioner for those particular meetings by date. I so. would like to continue to get my packets and everything else so oh, that absolutely. I can stay up to date. Absolutely. Okay. And I know you need to leave again. Be assured that you have those excused uh, absences. And Tom, quit driving the woman crazy. You, you, you know it doesn't help all the rest of us. God bless you, Tom. All right, next discussion of city responsibility regarding ethics violations filed against employees and board members. Mr. City Attorney, I'm going to let you take that over. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, over the last several months, um, the city has been inundated with a number of lawsuits and also a number of ethics complaints. Um, and by the way, there was a fourth lawsuit filed today. Um, I have made copies of that for you to take a look at, and um, if you want to give me a call, I can discuss those, those, that particular complaint as well as the other three that have been filed. This particular issue that I'm bringing before you tonight is to address the ethics complaints that have been filed. 
I went through a long process of explaining what the common law obligation the city has relative to uh, covering the attorney's fees and costs related to the defense of these ethics complaints um, in the memo that I gave to you dated July 28th. Specifically, there have been ethics complaints filed against um, you, the mayor, former Commissioner uh, Schantz, our building official, Frank DeSantis, our city manager, Shane Crawford, um, his administrative assistant, Cheryl McGrady, and also, it's our understanding, based upon a newspaper article uh, that has been published, that Commissioner Poe has also been the source of a ethics complaint. Right now, all of the ethics complaints that have been found to be uh, sufficient enough for an investigation to, be move, to move forward, which is five of them, um, have been given to your insurance carrier. You're lucky enough to have a good insurance policy that covers up to $100,000 worth of attorney's fees and costs for this type of matter to be defended. These are in the same category as the first three lawsuits that have been filed too, so that you should know that the attorney's fees that are accruing under the first three lawsuits and assumably the fourth lawsuit and these seven different ethics complaints could eventually eat up the $100,000 coverage that you have in your policy. The purpose of the memo that I sent to you was for, to give you some options. Um, the options that, that are out there are that you can decide at this point whether or not you want to cover the attorney's fees and costs to defend either these commissioners, the mayor, or, or these city employees. Um, or not defend them if the insurance policy limits are exceeded. The other thing that you should note that is that on these five ethics complaints that are moving forward, um, there is a, a possibility that the insurance company decides to withdraw from representing um, these people in defense of these allegations. So it's exceeding the $100,000 limit, and then basically dropping the city completely in its defense, the insurance company has that ability under the reservation of rights letter that they have provided. So the purpose of the memo was to get some direction. You don't have to do it tonight, but here are the five options that I think that you can consider tonight. The first two are approve the payment of attorney's fees and costs uh, for defending these five individuals, or in fact all seven, um, if you want to go to that extent, um, if the other two are found to be moved forward to the next stage. Um, if in fact the insurance policy limits are exceeded, that's the first. The second would be to approve the payment of attorney's fees and costs in defense of these seven complaints if the insurance company decides that it's no longer gonna, going to defend. The third option would be to wait until uh, some time in the future, maybe a suggestion that you wait until after all of the complaints or each individual complaint has been completed or determined um, insufficient or founded, um, and make the determination at that point as to attorney's fees and costs relative to exceeding over 100,000 or in the situation where the insurance company um, decides not to defend any longer. And the last option um, that I think that you can decide on is, is that obviously you can decide that um, you're not going to do any of the above. Um, but the reason I brought it to you now is, is that you've got these individuals who um, have had these allegations brought against them. They have no assurances that they're gonna be defended through this, this entire process. They have no assurance that the $100,000 is not gonna be eight up in the four lawsuits that have now been filed. Um, and so if, if you make the decision now, you can reassure those employees, the mayor or those commissioners that are in, involved or former commissioner, you may be able to give them some form of um, feeling of insur insurance is a bad word to use, but to, to feel that you know, they're gonna be defended. 
The other thing that you should keep in mind if you decide not to make a decision now, each one of these individuals that have been um, the subject of these ethics complaints could hire their own lawyer. And I can tell you that if they hire their outside, outside lawyers, um, the fees could be in the four to $500 an hour range versus the range that is currently being paid to um, either our law firm on the first lawsuit or the, uh, the Eunice Salzman Jensen law firm. I'm sure that they, they would be, it's a reduced rate, probably in the $200 an hour range. So if you don't make a decision now and each, any of these individuals decide that they're going to get outside counsel, you may have doubled your exposure once you get to the end, end line because you're paying twice the normal um, or the government rate that you would be currently getting. So um, I, don't, I didn't want to wait any longer um, in presenting your options to you. Um, I am not making a recommendation one way or the other based upon... Um, um, you know, my belief that it's not something appropriate for me to be doing one way or the other. And frankly, after having discussion with uh, the, the speaker of a seminar that I attended last week at the Florida Municipal Attorneys Association meeting, it was his recommendation that city attorneys don't make such a recommendation. So I wanted to give you your options, and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. I will caution you, though. I, I'm not going to discuss with you the specifics of any of the complaints that have been filed. They are not subject to the public records law. They are not subject to the open meetings law. Uh, they are protected pursuant to Florida statute. Um, and so I will not be talking about the specifics of those complaints. Um, so now, Mr. Mayor, I just hand it back over to you. I would suggest, though, Mr. Mayor, that at least on the matter that deals with you, um, that um, you would abstain from voting as it deals with your insurance coverage or, or the payment of your defense, uh, because I believe that it could be perceived as being a conflict of interest. Um, Ms. Schantz is no longer a commissioner, so that wouldn't be a concern for her or Mr. DeSantis or Ms. McGrady or Mr. Crawford, and since Commissioner Poe is not here, she doesn't have to worry about that either. I would suggest if she was here that she would abstain on any motion that was being made to pay for her defense costs. And Mr. C. Attorney, it was one question I'm about to ask you was I was going to abstain from voting on myself, but I wanted to be able to vote to support the, the, the employees of the city of Madeira Beach. So at this time, should I pass the gavel to the vice mayor to chair this vote? Uh, you don't have to. Um, okay. You can still call the vote, ask okay. for a motion. I would just make sure that, you know, when you, before you cast your vote, you make that acknowledgement that okay. you're voting for or against the others, but you're abstaining as it, as it applies to your particular defense. Thank you. One quick question, Mr. Mayor. Mr. City Attorney, can you give me an, an example of a uh, insurance when they withdraw? Uh, are they are they know they're going to lose or, or what what reason would they withdraw? Um, it could be that they believe that after doing their investigation there was some malicious or in, intentional conduct I that did not serve a public purpose. Perfect. Thank um, you. That that's that's really all I needed to know. And you know I've never <laughs> miss words. So, you know, let's just get this out here on the table, you guys. We're going we're gonna to cover people from start to finish, period, the end. There, there's no chance that uh, we're going to leave these people hanging. So I'll make a motion right now that we cover start to finish legal fees, period, to any employee who was employed at the time. Start to finish. Why would you not do that? I mean, they're, they're working for you, people. They're working for you, and you're suing them, and you're, you're taking money out of your own pocket. Seriously, you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. Every lawsuit costs you a minimum of five grand, five thousand dollars retainer. It's not a retainer; it's a five thousand dollars per case. They, they, they're going to get that every time, and that's it. I've been sued. It's not my first rodeo, too, and I'll probably be sued for this. But that's okay. I'm going to pay for the legal fees for my employees because they need to know that I'm behind them. Yep. Period. The end. That motion's made. I second that. Absolutely. A motion and a second. Is there any further discussion from yes, the commission? Yes, I, I would also like to, to dovetail on to what Commissioner Lester was just saying. This is a family. We're a family. All right, we blossom together. We hurt together. We are together. 
our intentions are well. We're here to do a good job for this city. There is no personal interest or personal gain for any one of us. You know, folks that are assuming that we're doing all this because of our own selfish reasons, they're very wrong. They're absolutely wrong. You know, this city has been in this very shape for since 1950s. We need to do something with it. We can't just sit here and let time go by and all the buildings dilapidate and, you know, this is our image. We have pride. We want to make this city a wonderful, wonderful city. When I was appointed to this board, Commissioner Lester said, you know, one of his reasons for appointing me was because he knows I love the city. We all do. We all love the city. We are servant of the city. We're public servants. We're trying to do a wonderful job. All right? There are people that may want to stop us, may want to slow us. That's okay. I mean, we all have uh, opinions and we can be, uh, you know, um, objective. That's okay. But in the real system, we need to come to the table. We need to agree that we disagree. You know, if we have done something wrong, let's go back and revisit it. It's not going to hire an attorney and, and, and creating costs and raising up costs. I'm with you. So there's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I think we just need Aye. to bring all this foolishness to an end, really. This is ridiculous. Okay. It's gone on too long. Madam City Clerk, you have cards? I have public comments, sir. Jim Everett? Got the letter card. Let me just say I support the motion on the floor. Any, uh, any organization, any business, any corporation, any board that you serve on uh, for a condominium association, you all have errors and emissions insurance. You cover your people that represent you. And to not do that is, uh, would be an, a, a ridiculous uh, position for the city to take. If the, city, if the citizens want to create a bill for themselves by suing the city, then so be it. So um, you can exercise your opinions at the polls. Um, and of course, we're all free to do that. Uh, but I think, I think you know, <laughs> it's gotten a little bit out of hand. I think a lot of the complaints that I've at least heard um, and some of the things I've seen on the boards are, um, are ridiculous, and I think it needs to, to be brought to a stop. And I think you guys need to defend yourselves. So, um, so I applaud the motion on the floor, and I encourage you to vote for it. Thank you. Tom Wally. Thank you again for letting me speak. And thank you, Terry, for your awesome comment and standing behind the people that you work with. As far as paying for the defense of our elected officials, I think we should use every single penny that our city has available in hiring the best defense team that is available to show them that we stand behind them in the way that they stand behind us. We as citizens should be embarrassed that our elected officials have to respond at all about their ethics after doing such a great job running our city because something like not being politically correct. Every resident that owns property in this city is responsible for paying taxes. And just because you pay taxes in this city doesn't mean you should be able to stand in the way of good people running or volunteering and taking their time to make our city a better place. Instead, support and pray for our leaders that God has a place that God has in place and become part of the process, not a deterrent. I could turn around and sue every single one of you right now, and it's going to cost us both to hire an attorney, and it's a bunch of crap. I mean, I look at you people, and I know a lot of you guys personally, and I know your hearts love this city, and you do nothing with another agenda other than make this a better place. And I'm embarrassed that the citizens of this community would do something like this to hurt our city. I'm embarrassed to be one of these citizens. And I applaud you guys for the job that you all do. Thank you. Madam City Clerk. Reese Noren. And only when there's a Ferris wheel do you move, brother. I know that.
<laughs> I'm uh, Reese Norn. I live at 363A Medallion Boulevard, right over here in the uh, Madeira Beach Yacht Club complex. I fully support this motion. I've held several positions where I volunteered, and uh, currently I'm a director uh, of the association that owns this complex. I'm the vice president of it, and I've had uh, uh, corporate positions where I was also responsible for the legal ramifications of our decisions. I think anyone who volunteers not just as elected as a city official should be supported 100% because they are doing the job that we all want to have done. We may not agree with their position in the job, but that's not a cause for what I've seen of these suits. Uh, uh, if I was a judge, I'd throw them out in a minute. I wouldn't even let them in. And I've spent a lot of time in court. I'm not an attorney, but I am an expert witness and have served in that capacity in a number of cases. So I am in favor of supporting our people. I'm also in favor of renaming that group of people who are bent on destroying this nice city that I've enjoyed for 30 years. I think the intent is malicious, and I do, don't believe it's Madeira Beach United. I believe it's Madeira Beach divided. And I think that's what they're trying to accomplish, is to divide. I don't know where they were when all the meetings that I attended, as far as the planning commission and, and our uh, master plan were there that was open to everybody. I'm not so sure how they can find uh, grounds to say it was not, was not open to. I, I ex expressed my opinions. I didn't win, <laughs> but uh, I expressed my opinions anyway on those things that I disagreed with. So I see nothing uh, in, in the suits that I've heard of against the people. I know nobody, by the way, personally. I have no company. I am no vested interest other than I love Deer Beach. <laughs> Thank you. Madam State Clerk. Veronica Blackwood. Good evening. My name is Veronica Blackwood. I'm a former resident of Madeira Beach and a former volunteer at City Hall. I'm currently a resident of St. Pete Beach because I had to move out. I'm also a 30-year veteran of the Chicago Police Department where I served the last 15 years as a supervisor in the Organized Crime Division of the Bureau of Investigative Services for the Chicago Police Department. I'm the author of the complaint against one of the seated members of this commission. I'm also a member of Madeira Beach United. When I worked for this city for free, it was with the best of intention. And that is the best of my intention when I follow through on this complaint. And Mr. Trask, you are questioning the status of the complaint that I filed. Sufficient for investigation if you'd like to see the copy. Thank you. Clerk. Sam Baker. Good evening. I'm Sam Baker. Uh, I live at 742 Pruitt Drive. Resident here for 26 years. I'd like to open by saying two things. One, I'm kind of conservative. I don't like to see things move too fast. The second thing I want to tell uh, Commissioner Lister that I absolutely agree with his compassionate feeling for uh, the responsibility of the city for its employees. 
but on the condition, and, and I refer to the fourth recommendation that the city lawyer said, which is to kind of wait and see. Uh, we're facing, you're facing, the city is facing, let's face it, this will be tax money, uh, possibly hundreds of thousands of dollars in uh, legal expenses, or maybe not. I want to point out that there's, there are two precedents in this city for waiting until the case is over. Both of them involved commissioners. Uh, Commissioner John Wolpert uh, faced a lawsuit, paid his own legal fees, and won his case. It took him two years to recover his legal costs from the city. He had quite a battle about that. I think that's way too long. In 2009, Commissioner Art Thomas incurred $37,000 in legal costs defending himself and was not reimbursed by the city until his case had been set aside, at which point the, the city did pick it up. In other words, I think the city's policy up to this point has to be wait and see. Uh, I think it's way pre premature to just, excuse me, uh, say we're gonna guarantee all these costs when we don't even know what they are and we don't even know what the outcome of these investigations are gonna be. Thank you. I'm C. Clerk. Joe Jorgensen. Joe Jorgensen, 13021 Boca Ciega Avenue. Uh, I'm a little surprised that you guys would give, put a blank check out there for the employees. You've got $100,000 committed from your insurance company, and you're not willing to wait to see what comes out of this? I mean, you're not willing to give it a little time and find out? Do you know what, you know what these complaints are? I mean, the three of you are in one of the lawsuits. I don't even know how any, any of you can vote on anything. You've got a conflict of interest. But the, the, the point is, <clears throat> you don't know what the suits are, I'm assuming, unless you've, you've seen them. You don't know what they are. Was there any criminal intent there? You don't know. Was there a malicious act there? You don't know. We paid these employees to do a job, and I think they should be supported if they've done their job properly. If they haven't done their job properly, you're about to say, we don't care. We don't care if you rob the bank. We're going to pay your defense without giving the $100,000 to try. Or, as Attorney Trash says, the insurance company could pull out. But they don't pull out just to pull out. They pull out because they realize they're going to lose. Because it was a malicious act, there was criminal activity, something else. Then you can intelligently make a decision here. Right now, you're writing a blank check with our money. You talk about it's cost $5,000 for deductible, and if we want to spend, if, if we want to force the city to spend the money, if the, if the residents want to force the city to spend the money, you're writing a blank check. You got to think about that. You got to think about what you're doing here. You've got insurance coverage to $100,000. Wouldn't it be prudent just to wait and see how these things progress to see what the, what the charges really are? I mean, don't give away our money just because you want to give away the money. It's, it's, it's a great feeling to say, hey, we support our people 100%, and you should. If they've done their job, and they've done it properly, and they haven't done anything wrong, you should be behind them 100%. But you don't know that. You don't know that. So I think you should think about the motion you made, and maybe think about waiting until you get a little further down the road before you commit a blank check. Thank you. Robert Shaw. My name is Robert Shaw. <clears throat> I live at 507 129th Avenue East in Madeira Beach. Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, the comments I want to make, I'm addressing more to my fellow citizens than I am to this board. But when civil dialogue is replaced as a medium by which to, to mitigate or to discuss problems or differences of opinion, 
uh, and is replaced by litigation, any political body in any community is in trouble, and that's what people have done with us. The result is going to be that people are afraid to come up here and volunteer to serve this community on any of the boards because of the actions of, of these people. And in the past, we've always had two ways of resolving issues. We could either go to uh, an amendment or uh, <clears throat> we could expect people to go to the polls and vote somebody they disagree with strongly enough out of office to litigate, to, to sue, to cause expenditures uh, is not the way to resolve these problems. And I think as a last resort, that method is available, but in this case, it hasn't been used as a last resort. It's been used as an attack on this commission and people should think about it. Thank you. Steve Rayo. Good evening, Your Honor, Commissioners. I never thought I'd ever say this, but Mr. Jorgensen made a couple of good points. One of them being, you don't know if there's any criminal allegations against this board. And I would recommend, with the advice of Mr. Trask, after all, he listed a great many options, but I think he left out one. I think these allegations should be referred to the Attorney General's office. This city operates under a charter issued by the state of Florida, and you serve this city at the pleasure, not only of the citizens, but of the state of Florida. You take an oath to support the Constitution of the state of Florida. If there are any criminal allegations, then let's not panic, because any criminal investigation will take precedence over any civil action until that is over. And then, if there is no finding of criminal activity, that goes a long way to absolving you of any civil liability. I wonder if Mr. Trask would comment on that. I'll be happy Just to talk to him after the meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. Lynn Piotti. I'm freezing. <laughs> it's cold in here. <laughs> Jeez. You have a suit on, right? <laughs> well, um, Lynn Piotti, 513, 129. I'd just like to say that. Um, I've been a victim of this type of uh, harassment, I should call it. I was a commissioner and I was um, provided with a, uh, a suit and I had to uh, fend for myself as far as defense. Luckily, I had some help to do so, but I can tell you that was a, a costly proposition. I think this is really a vindictive and very spiteful um, action that's being taken by a group of people who are really bent on disruption of the city, uh, the administration, the, uh, the officers. Uh, it's, it's downright disgraceful. I'm saddened by it. I'm so angry about it because I can relate to it so closely. Uh, I know what you folks are thinking. I know what you're feeling. And my heart goes out to you. Um, I think this started basically because of the intentional divisiveness of the divisional actions that were happening because of the, um, the buildings uh, that were supposed to be discussed in a civil manner and brought, to, brought about uh, by people who didn't get their way. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it came out. And it's continuing. But you know, the, the sad part about it is it works. It's unfortunate because all we have to do is to sit down and write a complaint and then sit back and watch it 
work. Unfortunately, all of these people have found that to be um, a tool, and they're using it, and they're using it to the max. I, uh, I heard that one of the uh, authors of one of the complaints is Elaine Poe. I, um, I also know that there are other people who um, have written these, and I, I was wondering if we're ever going to find out who are the authors of these things. And I think if you find the source of these uh, complaints, you'll find that um, there's a common thread. It's unfortunate, but they're doing this in, in, in a manner that's just inappropriate and, and just out of, out of control. Um, I don't know, I'm just disgusted with the whole thing. I, uh, as far as what I would do or recommend, I think a wait and see attitude because I've heard something about the fact that we can go back and, and sue these people for frivolous suits. That might be an option, and it might happen because these may not have any foundation at all. Thank you very much, and God bless you. I have no more cards. No more cards. Oh, but somebody. so everybody's on the same process. Yeah, he, he can fill it out after the meeting so we can keep the meeting going along, Mayor. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, um, I agree with a lot with what um, Len just said up here. I think we've seen a lot of divisiveness in, in this town. For, and everyone's got their opinions, they always will. But what we're looking at here is really no other option but to, I think, go ahead with the motion that's been made. You're not talking about a couple thousand dollars. Look at St. Pete Beach. It's been in the papers as far as how much that's cost that city, and you're over $2 million worth of legal fees and everything here. I think you really have no choice but to go forward with what the motion is just to approve it, not only just have the backs of everybody here, but also just to protect the city. So I'd urge you to go forward with what you're doing. Madam City Clerk, all right, uh, before. Can, can I, before you move on, I just yes. want to uh, address a couple of things. You've heard a couple of people talk about the lawsuits. That's not what we're here on tonight. This particular agenda item is just dealing with the ethics complaints that have been filed. And I want to make it absolutely clear that we're talking about the ethics complaints that were filed with the Commission on Ethics and also the ICMA. And I'm hoping that Mr. Lister's motion was to address that too, because I don't know if I was absolutely clear on that. I want to make sure that this, uh, this memo was dealing with not only the Commission on Ethics uh, complaints, but also the ICMA complaints. It has nothing to do with the lawsuits themselves. Those are going to stand on their own one way or the other. So, um, and if it gets to the point where these ethics complaints have been resolved and paid by the insurance company, you know, maybe this is a non-issue because these will probably be dealt with much quicker than the lawsuits. But once we get to the point where we're the over the $100,000 defense coverage, we're going to be coming back to you and talking to you about that when it comes to the lawsuits themselves, four of them now that have been filed by these people. So um, I just want to make that distinction because there seemed to be some confusion. This is just the ethics complaints filed with ICMA and the Commission on Ethics. All right, Mr. Mayor, if I can have the floor. Uh, Tom, the, the $100,000, though, is an aggregate for all of the above. That's correct. So if, if, if it hits on the five ethics complaints and it gets to the 100, well, then that means that there's no coverage for the lawsuits. They're going to have to be paid out of, you know, out of the general fund. So on our, on our fourth lawsuit that was filed this afternoon, uh, $100,000 doesn't go far. I think it's safe to say that you will be paying out of pocket to defend this if that's what you deem, deem necessary. If, if I can just give a short editorial, and I, I just feel it necessary because I've been the the target of some of these is these ethics charges. You're, you're suing the home team, and and it, it needs to stop. And I think I've gone on record a number of times to say that you know we were once a very united community, and now it's 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 been torn apart for a number of different reasons. 
but if, if you have a problem with the electorate, you don't sue them. You run somebody against them and get that changed. If you don't like the administration, you get the electorate changed and get them to change the administration. You don't sue them, and that's what's going on here. We have somebody from out of town giving advice on how for us to run our company, our organization, our city, and just because he thinks it's the right way to do it, to file these ethics charges and file these suits and defame everybody that's involved here, doesn't mean that it's the right way. That's his way. It's not our way. And so I humbly ask that this board defend me because I, you know, I'm 39 years old. I don't know. I hope to retire in Madera Beach, but I might not. But this junk that's going on is going to follow me on Google until I retire, and I'm, I'm not happy with it. So I want to know that the company that I work for, that I bust my butt for, is going to be behind me. So that's all I got to say. Thank you, Mr. State Manager. <clears throat> You've already got to make your public comment, sir, once. That's okay. I appreciate it. This isn't, a, this isn't a debate. You made your public comment. All right, Commission. Um, and I want to make sure with the city attorney, if he understands this correctly, I do want to vote in favor of, you know, of Florida staff and the past commissioner, but I'm abstaining from my vote for myself. Does that make sense? Do you understand that, Madam City Clerk, for the record? Okay. So at this time, would you please, or do you have a, you have a uh, Yeah, may I, uh, we heard that we could wait a little bit. I just want to discuss that a little bit with Tom. See, we heard from a few citizens that if we just wait and see, what is that about? What, in other words, if we wait and see, what will happen? I'm not sure exactly where they're going with that. I can tell you this. And if you, when you read the memo that I provided you, there were some ethics complaints that deal with, dealt with criminal charges. And in, in one of those particular cases, even though there were criminal charges involved, it was still covered uh, by uh, the city that provided a defense. So, um, you know, there is the test. Um, that's a two-pronged test that we look at to determine whether or not that the common law doctrine of the right to legal representation is in place. The first is, is that the matter at issue must arise out of or be in connection with the performance of their official duties. And the second is that such performance of duties serves a public purpose. And obviously, all of them are met with regard to number one. This wouldn't have, none of these complaints would have come if they had not been either an employee of the city or on this commission. So the second question or the second prong of it, does it serve a public purpose? I think it should be pretty clear uh, that when you look at this, it doesn't really matter what the activity was that occurred or being complained of, and I'm not going to go into those details, but the real question is, does it serve a benefit to the public by resolving the entire issue or resolving these complaints? And, and obviously, you have to make that determination. Does resolving these ethics complaints solve, uh, serve a public purpose? Is there a benefit there? It's not what they did in the underlying allegations. So, Mr. Vice Mayor, just so we're clear that when he said that there was criminal intent, he's talking about the examples that he put into the memo. It, if there was criminal intent on behalf of the ethics violations against me, I'm pretty sure that Mr. Luckett and I would have probably had a conversation already and there would be an investigation going on. So there, there is no criminal intent in any of these things. In I wasn't, fact, I, I wasn't I even assuming my, that. I, I, I mean, I don't even understand you know, where a criminal I, act could come correct. into play. Uh, I, I've shared, I, and I haven't had a chance since you've been elected to share mine with you, but I'll be <laughs> certainly be happy to. But the other commissioners have been made aware of it, and it, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolute waste of time, and it's costing now every taxpayer in Madeira Beach money. Mm -hmm. It's going to dip into everybody's dollar. Mm -hmm. We froze the millage rate this year. If we have a $2 million legal obligation next year, we're not going to be able to do that. The, the other question was uh, deferring this to a Secretary General, Pam Bundy. Did you, what was that? Um, you know, I'm not really sure where that's going. You already have an organization that's set up to deal with these, the Commission on Ethics and the ICMA. They have specific guidelines on how they deal with Commission on Ethics. It doesn't need to go to the Attorney General's office to determine whether there's a crime being committed. These are ethics complaints and determine whether or not that there's been an ethical violation of Chapter 112. And so just by moving it from one investigative agency to another investigative agency, is that going to help? I don't think so, especially if you're taking it out of the hands of the experts who deal with ethics issues every day and putting it in the Attorney General's office, which that's only part of their, um, you know, part of their work. Um, I just I don't, I don't I don't see any benefit to 
shifting investigative actions. And by the way, we don't have control over what the Commission on Ethics does. They get to determine whether or not those complaints are justified. Either that or the complainant gets the opportunity to dismiss the complaint. Otherwise, um, it either it needs to come to its resolution one way or the other. We don't, we don't get to ask the Commission on Ethics, uh, forget what you're doing. We're going to send it to somebody else, have them make the decision. That's not how it works. Thank you. Also, Mr. Vice Mayor, I was informed that um, by the Board of Ethics that most of these go to the investigative stage just because they want to find out exactly what's going on. Um, it takes eight to ten months to get that investigation done. I'm not going to sit in limbo for eight to ten months. If you guys aren't going to cover me, I'm lowering up because this follows me for the rest of my life. That, as far as I'm concerned, that's not even an option. We are protecting the city. We're protecting the, 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 the citizens. We're protecting the, the, the employees and also the, the folks that sit on this board. You know, I, I'm a newbie here, and I'm really, you know, realizing how much work goes into this. You know, in order for me to be here, I have to prepare a week ahead of time. <laughs> it takes a lot of time, and I don't think the citizens understand that and appreciate it. You have our back. I appreciate it. Like I said, it's just, you can tell, I, I'm frustrated and I apologize, but it's taken a toll. And, you know, the, the, the records requests that are going through the city clerk's office, the frivolousness of some of this stuff that's going on. And let's face it, none of this happened until we took on two major subjects. And then when that happened, all of a sudden, everything became unethical. It's too much of a coincidence for me. Uh, I've got a spotless employee evaluation record for the last four and a half years, and now I'm an unethical city manager. You Google me in the first two pages, have nothing but Crawford and un unethical. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sour. And I, We're I very my, lucky to have you. I appreciate it, and I, I appreciate the support. All right. Madam State Clerk, <coughs> would you please call the vote? Vice Mayor Gohavi? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Absolutely. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Mayor Palladino. I'm abstaining for myself by voting yes for the rest of the commission and staff. Okay. All right, next, uh, reappointment of special magistrates to hear motions related to orders previously entered. Is that going to be Mr. City Manager? Or? That's going to be Mr. Okay, Mr. Mr. City, City Attorney. Attorney. Mr. Okay. To give you a little bit of background, you remember that uh, the city commission appointed a new special magistrate, and it, he was to take uh, office, I believe it was July 1st? Or, yes. Uh, and July 1st. And that basically uh, put us in a position that any of the orders that had been entered by the prior magistrates, which was Mr. Langford and Ms. Schechter, um, are kind of put in a little bit of a limbo position. And so... Um, just after um, Mr. Langford stopped being the special magistrate, the city received a, a motion for reconsideration and rehearing on a case that he had heard. And obviously, um, it's, it would be better to have the special magistrate that heard the original order to hear the motion for a reconsideration and rehearing. And so I'm asking that the commission reappoint in addition to the current special magistrate, reappoint Mr. Langford and Ms. Schechter to wrap up any appeals or motions for reconsideration on the cases that they heard. And I think that that can all be accomplished if you just appoint them through December 31st, 2016. And as a side note, I want you to know that on this particular motion that brought this to a head, the motion for reconsideration rehearing, that particular property owner has, through his attorney, has made a large settlement offer, um, and I will go over the details of that and uh, have it fully briefed for you so that you understand, but it may not even get to Mr. Langford. Um, but if we can't work out that settlement, um, I would like the, uh, Mr. Langford to make the de decision on the motion for rehearing. So I will fully brief the settlement offer that has been made just recently, a couple of days ago. Uh, but in the meantime, I'd ask that you reappoint Ms. Schechter and Mr. Langford through December 31st, 2016, in addition to the current magistrates that we already have. Can we reappoint them just for the cases that they've heard in the past and not new cases? Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Fantastic. So I just time I'll make that motion. Yes, I'll make that motion that we reappoint Mr. Langford and Mrs. Uh, Audrey? Schechter. Schechter for cases that have 
been heard in the past and only cases that have been heard in the past if they are re-appointed. Re, uh, I'm sorry, not reappointed. Re-entered. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, I think that you covered it in your motion. Close that enough. You're going you're gonna to reappoint them through December 31st to hear cases, um, motions for rehearing or, or appeals. But right. if something happens after the 31st of December, we need to reappoint them again. Uh, we would have to come back. I don't think it's going to happen, but I wanted a sunset provision. Okay. I wanted right. a drop dead date. So I'll sunset that on December 31, 2016. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any comments from staff? I imagine Tom, you. <clears throat> no, I really think this is only going to address this one case, okay. but I just need to have the ability to do it. What? We don't want to have to retrain or give background to the new special magistrate and have him try to figure out what the old special magistrate did. Is there any comments? Please call the roll. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Vice Mayor Gojavi? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Commissioner Lister? Yes. All right. Next resolution 2016-25. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, is resolution 2016-25 a resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the fiscal year 2016 budget by increasing marina fund revenue in the amount of $21,000? increasing marina fund expenditures in the amount of $21,000 and providing for an effective date. That was a reading of resolution 2016-25 by title only. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to approve resolution 2016-25. Second. A motion is second. Uh, Mr. Marsicano, is there anything from staff? All right. Is there any comments? No, I have no more comment cards. Okay. Would you please call the roll? Vice Mayor Gojavi? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next resolution 2016-26. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, resolution 2016-26, a resolution of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the fiscal year 2016 budget by increasing general fund revenue in the amount of $14,600, increasing general fund expenditures in the amount of $8,000, and providing for an effective date. That was reading resolution 2016-26 by title only. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion that this commission pass resolution 2016-26. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any comments from staff, Mr. Assistant City Attorney? Um, I would just say that, uh, oh, I guess uh, Tom, Tom's looking at me, so I better yeah, mention that uh, ball, I? Assistant City Attorney is probably not uh, <laughs> yeah, the qualification manager. for me. Yeah. Um, I did just want to mention, so this is related to the parking ticket collections. We are, uh, we're experiencing higher volume in the parking tickets than anticipated. So that means revenue is going up and as a product of revenue going up, so does the cost of processing those tickets. So the net effect is an increase the budgetary balance with revenue, $6,600 in excess of expenditures for this amendment and right. staff recommends approval. Thank you, Mr. Assistant City Manager. Is there any comments? Madam City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Vice Mayor Gojavi? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Poe? All right, next budget and uh, finance policy adoption, revenue policies, and debt management policy. I believe that presentation was from the April 26th BOC workshop. Mr. Assistant City Manager. Thank you, sir. Yes, this is a follow-up to proposed policies back in April. And uh, just following up on something I mentioned earlier regarding best practices and bringing new concepts and ideas to your attention, the idea here is for the city to establish a policy framework to guide its budget and finance operations. We adopted an investment policy and fund balance policy last year. Uh, and so this, these two policies being proposed for, uh, being proposed as finalized tonight would be the revenue policy and debt management policy. The idea is that these will guide not just, uh, not just me, not just my staff, but anybody who, uh, who comes after me or who comes after current administration. The idea is that these are long-term policies that will guide the, the, the city's long-term position for quite some time. I can tell you that these policies have already taken effect. The, uh, some of these policies have already taken effect and impacted the budget. The proposed fiscal year 2017 budget 
uh, was handed off to you in compliance with these policies. Um, and again, the idea is to, to develop uh, a framework of solutions for the commission uh, so that your decision making will be guided by those in the future. And with that said, I will defer at this point to the city's financial advisor from PFM, David Hart, who has been in front of you a couple times to discuss these policies. Um, if, you are, if there are any questions, by all means, feel free to jump in. But again, this is the second time you've seen these, so hopefully they will, they will look familiar to you. And at this point, I'll hand it off to David. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to address you again. Uh, as Vince spoke of, um, these are uh, policies number three and four. Uh, a year ago, we set out to do four policies. Um, no need in me necessarily re recanting those that Vince just spoke to. What we do want to jump to is that uh, in the particulars, and we'll take them in the manner in which they were listed on your agenda, that being first the revenue policy, I uh, do want to offer that in each instance, each policy is, is meant to put the uh, city in position to be in compliance with what would be thought to be best in prevailing practices, as those practices might be uh, predicated upon the GFOA or uh, other organizations that would speak to um, creating, if you will, benchmark comparisons. With regards to the revenue policy, uh, part of the issue here is uh, just what's in the community's best interest. Uh, we, we can have policies that might be thought to be best practice on a national basis or uh, evidence something in a, in a larger and broader context. But what this policy also speaks to is that, uh, a recognition that the uh, residents, the businesses, visitors have choice in where it is they live, how it is they conduct business. And the policy uh, calls out for uh, uh, Vince or his successor, as he defined it, the, the, to balance what might be considered a best practice against the realities of your, of your community. Uh, and in that, uh, there are guideposts, if you will, that are offered. Revenue diversification, as you see under the policy statement, a, uh, there are a listing of items A through D. Uh, diversification, uh, how it is revenues might be dealt with in the instance that uh, you're exceeding your normal, um, um, if you will, historical norms. How it is you might forecast, how do you create alignment around uh, matters attendant to growth. If we were to uh, turn the page to page two, but remain within section three, you can see that there are factors that the uh, director of finance assistant city manager should be attendant to. Uh, these include things such as uh, whether or not a rate fee or a charge is meant to cover the cost of a particular program or service, whether or not you're intending uh, to subsidize such type of activity would be a, a primary consideration. Certainly in the context of uh, adjusting matters that uh, fall under the heading of rates, fees, and charges, public input and their involvement uh, would, would be of consideration. In the past year, I was present when you considered parking fees. Parking fees would be a circumstance where you're trying to create a balance between what is being assessed and the revenues that are being generated from parking, but you're also very cognizant of what that means for the local business owner, for those who are tourists, and how it is uh, those fees might um, move people along or not, and what the consequences are uh, for both the purposes of enjoyment of beaches as well as a local business uh, connotation. The last point I'll make with regards to Section 3 is that, it, that this contemplates that the uh, position of the city treasurer, which is a, another title that I believe uh, Vince possesses, uh, and that entails that there will be a revenue manual that is maintained and that that manual uh, will speak to the essence of any rate fee or charge, and in the instance that any rate fee or charge is to be newly adopted or materially modified, that the, uh, that the revenue manual be updated accordingly. And finally, with that point noted, it is expected that the uh, annual budget would make reference to the revenue manual when thought to be warranted. The balance of the policy just speaks to how it is the, uh, what is contemplated in the first half is in fact executed and uh, adhered to on an ongoing basis. Any questions with regards to the proposed revenue policy? Commissioners? No, thanks Dave. You're welcome. With regards to the debt policy, uh, I will make reference to other um, 
other organizations from which uh, we drew materials, the MSRB, the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board, NABL, which is the Association of Bond Lawyers, uh, Florida has a Municipal Officers uh, uh, Manual. All of those were uh, sought uh, for how it is they would inform a best practice around the management of debt. Uh, and to that end, uh, this policy was uh, vetted on more than one occasion with Dwayne Draper of BMO, who sits as Bond and Disclosure uh, Council uh, to the City of Madeira Beach. Uh, as before, uh, this policy is intent to set guidelines uh, in the specifics of, uh, perhaps it's obvious, but in the context of long-term borrowing that would be incurred by the city. Uh, it's intended to enhance the quality of your decisions. It's not meant to be prescriptive. It's meant to be uh, a, a descriptive manner by which you would consider matters attendant to the affordability, the structure, and the management of long-term obligations. The policy under Section 2 identifies um, in a manner consistent with the manual the different types of debt that an entity such as Madeira Beach would, might incur in the subsequent sections. The, uh, those once identified receive a little bit more of a definition. If I beg your indulgence, we'll move quickly, go to page three, you'll see that there are debt issuance factors, and in particular, I want to call out items uh, on page three of nine under the debt issuance factors, the fact that uh, item B speaks to that long-term debt should not be incurred to include to uh, fund operations, and uh, item F, that the debt that is uh, being contemplated should not be outstanding longer than the useful life of the asset, meaning in a just a, to the extreme example to, to make the case, uh, you wouldn't incur a 20-year obligation for um, trash cans that you would place in a public space. Um, perhaps silly, but uh, I have actually encountered that once or twice, so uh, use it as a very real, if um, somewhat laughable example. Uh, item G, also call out for you. When we approached you in April, we had bracketed the present value savings both as a percent and in respect to a dollar amount. Uh, we have removed the brackets as we communicated to you at that time that was considered a prevailing and a, a reasonable uh, threshold for an entity, the size and the complexity of Madeira Beach, and we received no commentary that would suggest that we should um, move away from those. Uh, I will offer that these, this is a policy. This is not law. It is meant to serve, again, as a guideline, and it is certainly within the purview of, of uh, Mr. Tenalia or any of his successors to make recommendations that would be different than the policy, but the expectation is in such instances he would validate why he is, in fact, deviating from the policy. One of the matters uh, that is also contemplated by the policy at the top of page four of nine is a debt affordability study. Whether done in the most formal of ways or, or, or not, uh, what this contemplates is that the uh, city treasurer will conduct, a, as we, we use the words here with intention, a rigorous analysis uh, to ensure that what is being contemplated aligns well to the city's current budget and where it is you would like to be. So in this sense, begin with the end in mind, but do so uh, with a very reasonable and honest assessment of, of the current state of the city. Uh, and finally, that uh, section concludes that there should be a, a presentation of an overall uh, plan of finance in the context of current as well as forecast capital needs. The balance of the policy, as has been our custom with others, then speaks to certain practices and certain other steps that would outline the uh, administration of what the policy contemplates. Uh, cover that if you would like, but it's, I also recognize you've had a long meeting, and I would take any questions that you might have. Commissioners, any questions at this time? And Vince, uh, I know that we went through uh, the first time. So this is basically, it looks like the same thing and the same layout that uh, we received back on the uh, last meeting. Yes, it is, with the only exception being a couple items that we right. initially proposed are now finalized. The other difference being that we have since proposed the 2017 uh, budget. And I just wanted to pick up just one quick point on page four. David referenced the, the plan of finance. When we're reviewing debt affordability, uh, you know, the idea is that we're not going to run out and, and borrow money ahead of... Uh, any solid plans to to make certain capital improvements. So the proposed budget includes funds that have been set aside for future consideration, specifically being a future plan of finance to to essentially uh, 
coordinate some type of capital improvement project. So uh, if you recall, we had a, a phase of the utility burying project that was initially scheduled for, for borrowing in the upcoming fiscal year. We pulled that out. We set aside some funds to attack that in more of a, a longer term, uh, more deliberate fashion that I think is consistent with the, the finance plan referenced in this document. So ultimately, that's what we're looking for out of these policies. And so uh, we're already seeing the effects of them. And I, I think it's going to be a good thing for the city commission and for the city. Mr. Mayor. Yes. One additional in context of between the draft you saw in April uh, and what's before you. We did make a, um, I would consider it an appropriate modification. We had some language as to uh, a sort of tighter threshold. Uh, upon further examination, and while we think those were the right thresholds today, to Vince's opening comments, this policy is meant to survive sort of generationally. The policy contemplates that it will be updated on a periodic basis to make sure that what is today's best policy remains the best policies that you're adhering to. So with that in mind, we made reference to the entities that would, uh, if I'll use the word intentionally, prescribe what are the appropriate thresholds. So we're, we, we sort of said, okay, we're not going to look at what's the percent of AV. What we're going to say is what, does, what might a national rating agency say is the right level of AV? Because we know that that may change over time. And so that's the type of change that we made. And I would also give uh, kudos to you and to, to Vince. Uh, earlier this year, we made the decision. Uh, you made the decision. We helped execute on that decision of financing for the uh, fire truck. And that was certainly done in, in a manner very consistent with this policy, even though it was in draft stage. Thank you. Commissioner, do you have any questions? And no, I just uh, like, the, like the use of the word rigorous. It's very good, guys. It's very nice. Thank you for the opportunity. You will never be criticized for rigorous analysis. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, I will entertain a motion for uh, for adoption. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. I believe we've got plenty of comment from staff. Mr. City Manager, did you have anything you would like to add to that? No, Mr. Mayor, I was watching it in the other room. Okay. Uh, no, I knew, I knew. You had a good handle on everything there, Mr. City Manager. I knew you were keeping an eye on us. Pardon? I knew you were keeping an eye on us. So hey, I, I, I went you, sweating. You guys are in good shape. Is there any comments, Madam City Clerk? No comments. All right. Would you please call the roll? Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Commissioner Lister? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Vice Mayor Gahavi? Yes. Next ordinance number 2016-07. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Ordinance 2016-07, an ordinance of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending Chapter 90, Concurrency Management of the Code of Ordinances, Amending Section 90-2, deleting various definitions relating to school concurrency, revising the definition of public schools in our local agreement, and creating definitions for deficient facility, land development regulatory system, mobility plan, new peak hour trip, peak hour, pre-existing use, transportation management plan, and transportation management system. Amending sections 90-4, 90-5, 90-7, and 90-8 to delete the provisions relating to school concurrency. Amending section 90-9 and section 90-10 in their entirety to repeal the transportation concurrency provisions and to establish a transportation management system. Creating section 90-11 providing for the application of transportation management plan strategies to deficient road corridors. Creating section 90-12, providing for methodology of determination of trip generation. Renumbering section 90-11 to 90-13, renumbering section 90-12 to 90-14, and deleting the adopted level of service for arterial and collector roads. Renumbering section 90-13 to 90-15, and providing for an effective date. That was the first reading of ordinance 2016-07 by title only. This time I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to approve. Second. The motion is second. Mr. C. Manager, any comments from staff? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as exciting as that all sounds, uh, this just keeps us up to date with what the county is mandating. And e so this was established with the uh, 
um, or I'm sorry, introduced at the Planning Commission, and now it's before you. Yeah. Um, we're just following suit. And I so believe the I next two items are pretty much mandated down I to the county. I was just going to say so items uh, 8, 9, 10, that. and 11 are all the, you're going to get the exact same staff report for me. I was at so. the PPC meeting for that. It was like yeah, even I'm more sure exciting Jeff, there. I figured you were, and so we're just following suit, just staying current with county regs. Okay. Is there any comments, Madam City Clerk? Okay. Uh, would you please call the roll? Oh, I'm sorry. Just a, just a quick uh, addition. Uh, just want to make sure that this revision does not mean that we're eliminating eliminating impact fees. Well, it's so, uh, was mandated by the county, Mr. Vice Mayor. So we they're uh, not even well, giving us a choice in this. The county, this this because I just said the public meetings when the county held this, that was the time to make public comment on the, the county. The county county mandated this down towards the municipalities. There's, and there's no elimination of impact. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, right. that, just okay. Yeah. okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand everything we discussed. Just want to make sure some citizens have asked me a question that uh, are we eliminating impact fees and this this vote? No. Yes, it does not. No. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Madam City Clerk. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Vice Mayor Gohavi? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Next ordinance, 2016-08. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. This is also the first reading. This is ordinance 2016-08, an ordinance of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the goals, objectives, and policy of this transportation element of the comprehensive plan of the City of Madeira Beach to delete transportation concurrency to provide for a multimodal transportation system that manages the impacts of development projects increases mobility and mitigates improvements consistent with the Metropolitan Planning Organization's Long Range Transportation Plan and the Pinellas County Mobility Plan, amending the intergovernmental coordination element to revise concurrency references to mobility management and to update a reference to the interlocal agreement with the School Board of Pinellas County regarding the coordination of land use and public school facilities planning. Amending the capital improvements element to support the establishment of a multimodal transportation system in accordance with the Pinellas County Mobility Plan and to eliminate the public school's level of service standard and providing for an effective date. That was the first reading of Ordinance 2016-08 by title only. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to pass Ordinance 2016-08. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, Mr. City Manager, anything from staff? Same staff report, yeah. Mr. Any comments from the commission? Any further comments, Madam City Clerk? No comment cards. Would you please call the roll? Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Commissioner Lister? Yes. Mayor Palladino? Yes. Vice Mayor Gohavi? Yes. Next ordinance 2016-09. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Ordinance 2016-09, an ordinance of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the conservation and coastal management element of the comprehensive plan of the City of Madeira Beach, revising the goals, policies, and objectives of the conservation and coastal management element to delete reference to acceptable roadway levels of service in Policy 1.8.1, to revise Goal 2 to include references to high water events, to add objectives and policies regarding flooding and sea level rise and providing for an effective date. That was a reading of Ordinance 2016-09 by title only, and it is the first reading. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion that this commission pass Ordinance number 2016-09 on first reading. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any comments from staff? Same as before, Mr. Mayor. All right. Is there any further comments? No comments. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Lister? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Vice Mayor Gohavi? Yes. Commissioner Poe? Mayor Palladino? Yes. Next ordinance 2016-10. Mr. City Attorney, please read by title only. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Ordinance 2016-10, an ordinance of the City of Madeira Beach, Florida, amending the public schools facilities element of the comprehensive plan of the City of Madeira Beach to delete objectives 2, 3, and 4, as well as the policies under those objectives, Renumbering objectives five, six, seven, and eight, as well as the policies under those objectives, and providing for an effective date. That was a reading of Ordinance 2016-10 by title only. It is the first reading. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to pass Ordinance Number 2016-10. Second. I have a 
motion a second. Is there any comments from staff or city manager? Same as before, Mr. Mayor, uh, recommendations for approval. Okay. Is there any further comments from the commission? Is there any further comment? I'm sorry, Mr. Vice Mayor, did you? No. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any further comments? No comment cards. Please, city clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Lister? Yes. Vice Mayor Gohavi? Yes. Commissioner Mayor Palladino? Yes. Commissioner Pope? All right, next reports or correspondence. Does any commissioners have any reports or correspondence? May I just for the sake of discussion talk about my position on this board and uh, some of the things that I have heard, Mayor. Uh, you know, some of the citizens have assumed that possibly I'm on this board because of self uh, interest that. You know, I may have wanted to come on this board to, um, you know, to possibly work on some of the projects that are, uh, that have passed through this, uh, this commission. I want to let the uh, public know that uh, I absolutely have no intentions, and I want to make this public that I will be working on any of these projects that uh, will be in the city of Madeira Beach. So I want to put this to bed, and that uh, there's some people out there that are thinking that that was my intention. So um, basically, I want to make this commitment that uh, you know there will not be any work out of my office on any projects that are happening in Madeira Beach. Um, also, um, as a reminder, I don't know if you know this, but the chamber I think is setting up a uh, an afternoon meeting in this uh, city on the 25th of August at 5 p.m. and they've invited uh, I don't I don't know if all the I guess all the uh, board members can't be there, but uh, at least they've invited me, so uh, I'm going to be attending that, you know, with your permission. And uh, I also have some high goals, just like you do, with, uh, with, with the city. And I really, really care about the city, like you do. And um, like to possibly maybe discuss some ideas. And Mayor, you've talked about beautification. You've talked about the 150th Avenue sidewalks and all those things. And of course, I've talked to the city manager as well, as far as uh, you know, maybe some uh, welcome signs and you've talked to the school board. So there are some ideas and that um, I have on the table and I just want to get your permission to sort of um, you know, implement them. And I'd like to keep you abreast of some of the things that uh, you know, I, I have in mind. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and, and Mr. Vice Mayor, the perfect way to do it is just to ask uh, you know, when we do the agenda setting meetings, yeah. put it on there so we can bring it up to be, to, to be set up onto a workshop is the perfect way because I, I think we'll discuss or talk about anything. Good. Even the weather. Yeah. Even about Mr. Terry maybe getting a haircut. I mean, you know, Commissioner Lewis from my team, we might just put that on the workshop. But uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, when I first went to run for mayor, you were actually the introduced to the first resident that somebody introduced to me. And, and I think Commissioner Lister summed it up. He says, you know, you have the love for the city of Madeira Beach. I saw that back six years ago. Yes, thank you. When I first went to run. So I don't think anybody questions your integrity. I mean, I know a lot of elected officials around Pinellas County. You're highly, highly respected in Pinellas County. And like I said, when I looked at your applications, I knew the boards you sat on. I know the people that are on the boards you sat on. I work with them doing things and bringing things here to the city of Madeira Beach. And I always just thought, what a positive, perfect fit that you would make sitting on this commission. And I'm honored that you're sitting up here with us. Thank you very much, Mayor. If this wasn't public, I could probably get a little bit emotional. <laughs> We've, had, we've heard some wonderful comments, too, from, from the residents, which makes us feel so much better. You know, you, you, sometimes you hear little things here and there from those folks that may not necessarily be in agreement with everything we do, but it's really important to also hear those folks that uh, are supporting us and encouraging us to do what we're doing because, you know, this takes up a lot of our time, a lot of our love, and we're giving back to this city and to the citizens and to the residents just because we enjoy giving back. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Any other commissioners? Mr. Mayor, just so I, know, I think you tried to explain it, and maybe I just didn't hear you, but oh. so for items on the workshop, you know, brainstorming ideas, things that you want to talk about, 
99% of the time today at 5.45, we would have had a workshop or a, a, an agenda setting meeting for the mm -hmm. workshop coming up in two weeks. Okay. So prior to that, at least it's easier if you contact us and say, hey, you know, Shane, I'd like you to put uh, a welcome sign or a discussion about welcome signs in Madeira Beach on the agenda setting. Then we can discuss it as a group at 545 and decide if we want to workshop that in two okay. weeks. And so that's kind of how that process works. That's, that way you set your own agenda and I'm not setting it for you. Okay. Thank okay. you for that. I'll, I'll let you know <clears throat> next time. Any other commissioners? Just want to remind everybody, I'm sure they've seen the marquee uh, this Friday night uh, is Jaws Night on the Beach. And I think uh, the way it works is you actually watch the movie from sitting in the water. There'll be prizes and things going out to the people that can stay in the water the longest watching the movie. And to make sure there's no sharks out there because this man cares about the residents and the visitors of Madeira Beach. The city manager will be swimming up and down the buoy lines to make sure there is no sharks out there during the film. He knows I'm not Our going hero, to, you know I'm Mr. Not Shane Crawford. Water. I'm not going in the water. Wait, you know they just spray people when they bite Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. The one he, he might think it's a cheese curd going by him, Commissioner Lister, so don't, don't tell him that. Um, on a serious note, I would like to, uh, you know, I, I can't say enough, you know, we, we've got a wonderful city, great residents, great employees out there, and I received word from the county uh, EMS section that uh, the Madeira Beach Fire Department is going to be recognized by the county. They were number one in turnout times, and if you don't know what turnout times is, that's the time when you initially get your call to when you get in that engine and get out the door, Madeira Beach is number one in the county. Also, the county has a standard of wanting to response times within 90% of four and a half minutes. There's only one fire station in Pinellas County that meets that time. That's your Madeira Beach Fire Department. And remember, those guys not only run calls here in Madeira Beach, but that's also running their calls for their responsibilities in Reddington, North Reddington, and Reddington Shores. So outstanding job, Madeira Beach Fire Department. They will be recognized at the September EMS Advisory uh, Board County meeting. So congratulations, guys. With that, Mr. City Attorney. Just real briefly, um, if you could... Um, stick around for just one more minute after the meeting. I'd like to give you a copy of the most recent lawsuit. This one was filed, just so that everybody knows, by Mr. Samuel Baker. You heard him speak earlier. Barbara Farrell, Linda Hine, if that's how you pronounce her name, Linda McCarter, and Crystal Albertson. This two-count lawsuit that was filed today was for declaratory judgment to declare that the petition that they filed was sufficient. You'll remember that uh, the city determined that the petition that they filed was insufficient. The second count of the lawsuit is asking the court to declare that the rezonings that took place were invalid because the petition suspended uh, that act um, to rezone those developments. Those are the only two counts in the complaint. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Baker and his friends have sued each one of the commissioners in, um, in their official capacities, as well as the city commission, as well as the city of Madeira Beach. So that has been passed on to the insurance carrier to um, provide defense, and I'll be happy to answer any questions about that Mr. later on. Okay, yeah, I won't ask them. Okay, if you could just hold yeah. on to your questions okay. so we can do it outside of the public. All right, thank you. Um, and the other thing, you know, you heard, heard me test, uh, talk about uh, the special magistrate case. I didn't want to let you know that that uh, offer did come in for settlement. The dollar amount is $11,873.19, so it's pretty substantial. I'll give you the details as to what the total amount is due and um, what my recommendation is, but I'll let you know that I just did receive that. So um, that's all I have for tonight, though. All right. And uh, Mr. City Manager, besides telling us you're not going to wear a Speedo on swim night Friday night, <laughs> up and down there, what that, do you Mr. got? Mayor. Uh, just a couple of quick things, and actually the Vice Mayor touched on it. Um, if you look at your calendar for the citizen events uh, this month, you were also supposed to have a citizen meet and greet on August 25th, which is coincidentally my birthday, but and that's not why we're canceling it, but we have the chamber event. So either I can try to reschedule it, or there's so many things going on in August that you have an opportunity to interact with the public. We can kind of maybe just excuse that part of it, because there's something going on almost literally every day. And instead of doing some sort of formal handshake, meet and greet, like a, I'm, I'm envisioning like a, a reception line at a wedding, you can just like meet people at the concert or we've got a number of different things. The, the movie's still going on, but if you want me to reschedule it and try to squeeze it in there, I can, I can certainly do that. Yeah. 
Right. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Right. Reschedule it or let her slide? Let her slide. Yeah. All right. I mean, you'll have plenty of chances to meet with the public. And, and Mr. State Manager, there's gonna, I think the uh, thing this Friday is going to be well attended. So, if, you know, commissioners, if you could be out there, uh, from what I've heard, it's going to be a giant crowd. We have 985 people on Facebook that have said that they're probably going to attend. So that. I don't have to worry about it. Look, it's the one that's nervous about it. And, and really, actually, I have a question for the city attorney. Can you get an ethics complaint for feeding uh, residents to sharks? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> sorry. I Just to pretend he didn't say it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. Well, I shouldn't have given him the idea. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's right. Moving on, uh, two more quick things. Uh, congratulations to the city. Uh, uh, Dave Marsicano, Vince Tenali, and I were able to secure a $48,000 grant for engineering purposes for the um, docks out here. Um, it's a major, major project. It's probably be millions of dollars, but at least, hey, 50 grand is 50 grand, and at least can, we can get going on some of the engineering if we can get through the permitting process. So we secured that and got that grant award this week. And then lastly, you know, you, during a meeting, you might see me texting every once in a while, and I've, I mentioned this before. Um, somebody texted me and told me that John's Pass was on fire, so I got a little excited about that. It wasn't John's Pass, thank God. There was a kitchen fire at Madura Norte, which was a little, not even more close, but it was relatively big enough. There was five responding units and uh, not a lot of smoke, but a big enough fire that it was big enough for people to get excited about. So if you hear that John's Pass was on fire tonight, John's Pass wasn't on fire tonight. That is all I have, Mr. Mayor. And just on behalf of myself and the employees and, and yourselves, I do appreciate the, the backing that you've shown us. Uh, again, I think, you'll, I think we're all gonna find that the ethics violations at least are completely invalid and frivolous and it's just a, a way of pecking at people's sanity more or less than anything else. And, and so, uh, you know, this is, this is just a tough time and, and we'll push through and keep plugging away, but um, it's it's good to know that your employer's got your back when you know you're doing the right thing. So we certainly appreciate it. And, and Mr. Sam Andrew will make up for a Friday night. Uh, we're looking forward to watching you swim up and down them swim buoys at I'll, night. I'll, I know a guy with some red shorts. I'll even get the buoy. Maybe I'll run up and down the beach a couple of times. Maybe do a, maybe do a, what's his name? Uh, Hasselhoff. The, uh, David Mark. Hasselhoff. From yeah, Baywatch. David Hasselhoff impression. Yeah. You look just like him there, uh, buddy. I cut the hair off. It's gone uh, Madam C. Clerk, anything from your office? Uh, the only thing I wanted to just bring to your attention is I had been out last week due to some family emergencies, and I still may have some days where I'm going to be away from the office, but I will keep you posted and be here to address anything the citizens have. And Mr. Mayor, you know, I've been working with Amy. She's got a very sensitive family situation. Nick Lewis has already proven to be incredible at, at his job. We also have a couple of other people in the office that can kind of just carry the weight. So there's, Amy's got a, a lot to deal with. There, there's no reason to fret or get some temps in. We'll just handle it as a staff and figure it out from there. All right, seeing no further business, this meeting adjourned at 8.38 p.m.